tonight on the Black Channel. Oh man, I, 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 I don't know which bad guy to support in this equation. Is this? Oh, I'm conflicted. The Black Channel is live. <laughs> Unapologetic, unadulterated, and absolutely uncompromising. Greetings, brothers and sisters from around the world, and welcome back to the home, the haven, the stronghold, and the everlasting super fortress of intelligent black thought. We are the black media, and this is the black channel. And I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, the voice of black America, the black authority broadcasting to you live from the only historically black college and university of higher education and learning in the cosmos. You are, of course, welcome to join us. And join us you shall because on tonight's program, oh boy, I got to tell you, when you're dealing with a movie that has all villains in it. That's the, the, this is the dilemma that you run into. What, what do you do when there are two opposing teams and they're both the bad guys? On the left, you've got the white supremacist Ben Shapiro and the Daily Wire. On the right, you got bedwinch Candace Owens. It's, I, I don't know. I don't know who I'm supposed to root for here. I, I don't know, because I don't want either one of them to win, but at the same time, I want them to stay strong enough to keep slugging away at each other. So, man, if we can do like the Lord of War, just fund both sides. How about that one? Should we go ahead and take a collection to see if we can fund both sides? If we can keep Candace properly funded and keep the Daily Wire properly funded and they just slug away here, you know, for the next couple of years as everyone balkanizes and picks sides. Can, can we do that one? Can we go ahead and make that one happen? All right, for those of you who may not have heard about it here, oh boy, Candace Owens is out at the Daily Wire, and I mean O-U-W-T all the way out at the Daily Wire here. Now, this is just a little while here. Now, if you'll all remember, let me go ahead and slow roast this part right now because Candace Owens' bedwinch credentials are about to get tested under fire is what's gonna happen here. So let me go ahead and back things up. First of all, did I call it or did I call it? What? That's the first thing. Let's just go ahead and get that one out of the way. I told you all there was no way in the hell she was going to last among that bunch. She's told herself all her life, well, there is no racism. I'm just the only black person here, but the rest of you just see race all the time. And I guarantee you after this, she'll tell you it's not about race. Unless she needs to get a bag, then she will tell you it's about race. But uh, she's the only black face among all these suspected white supremacists over there. And everything was fine and everything was sweet and everything was comfortable and... Let me tell you, anybody here would have seen, okay, this, the, the, the demographics in this room ain't making no sense. And she just sitting there, I don't see a problem at all. That's the problem with you. I'm comfortable anywhere. Okay, how comfortable are you now? In any case, so Candace Owens, who thought she had finally hit it big when she got a contract with the Daily Wire. And if you all remember, she was going in on Louder with Crowder and whatnot, and oh, you didn't get the right contract. But she was backing Zaddy back then, wasn't she? I mean, she was backing him. She sure was, or at least she thought that's what you're supposed to do because historically that's what she's been doing. Yeah, but um, here comes the other shoe dropping. Here comes the other shoe dropping. And Candace is now finding herself in a difficult bind because what she wants to do, what she wants to do is be able to tell you there's something racial going on. Oh, don't worry, we gonna get to that. So Candace Owens is booed up and everybody is great and wonderful and cool and kind and everything's going great. And then October 7th of last year, Hamas launches an attack on Israel Specifically, they were targeting civilians. It's the Middle East heating up again. 
and away they go. And while everyone does acknowledge, because you must, what occurred, certainly attention began to go on. By the way, the response from the Israeli government and the Israeli military has been quite indiscriminate. If the problem is Hamas, they are certainly not being very discriminate in going after Hamas. It looks like they're just blowing up everything. We are going to punish Gaza in general. And that is the observation that people have been making. Candace Owens takes it upon herself to do the same. Candace Owens, however, blissfully oblivious to the fact that by the way, those are your bosses over there. And Candace Owens has spent all this time telling us where racism is not. Well, after months of going back and forth, specifically with Daily Wire co-founder, a lot of folk think that he owns it. He doesn't. A guy named Jeremy Borash. That's really the guy who pulls the strings over there at Daily Wire. Ben Shapiro is more of a co-founder, but he doesn't run the place. The Jeremy dude does. He runs it. And I guess he figured it would have been too obvious to dump her a couple months ago. So he's been sitting back and laying in the cut. And he's been waiting for things to go on and whatnot and... Sure enough, Candace has done exactly what these guys claim. Now, please remember, these alt-right individuals are the guys who tell you that, well, we need to have an alternative media because we are silenced by the corporate liberal media. Remember? These guys are supposed to be the free speech advocates. Remember? They're supposed to be the free speech advocates. That's what they're supposed to be. And yet, what do you see? What do you see? Why, these guys look just like the folks they claim that they're against. They, these, they're acting like the very folks they claim they were against. Isn't that interesting? So they've been taking it on the chin. They've been taking it on the chin. Folks have not been happy with that. Folks have been squadding up. It didn't take them very long for things to go sideways. Didn't take very long at all for that to happen. So, boy, they're sitting there and they don't know what they're doing. Candace Owens, I mean, she was looking forward to having a bag. She was looking forward to having a bag. She thought she was going to be able to ride this, and she certainly did utilize it, let me tell you. I mean, the Daily Wire has certainly boosted her profile. And now it's going to be a situation here because here's the problem. Let me explain to you all what the dilemma here is. On the one side, you have the white supremacists of Jewish descent who own the Daily Wire, who own and operate the Daily Wire. Then you got Candace the Bedwinch Owens, and all of them are attempting to appeal to the white supremacist masses. There's the real issue is that both of them are trying to see who can appease the white supremacist masses more. Boy, if you think we're having a hard time picking who to back here, you should see what the readers of these places got to go through for their dilemma. Who are they supposed to back? Who are they supposed to support? Who are they supposed to be for us? It's a problem. It is a problem. 
All right, let's go ahead and get here into where things are really going down right here. As you can see from this particular article here from Rolling Stone, Candace Owens is out at Daily Wire after months of railing against Jewish people. What? This article from CNN, Ben Shapiro's The Daily Wire severs ties with Candace Owens after her embrace of anti-Semitic rhetoric. Well, what happened to allegedly, supposedly? What what happened to that? What happened to that? Because when CNN and Rolling Stone are talking about black folk and folks are doing things to us, not talking, doing things, it's always alleged, the alleged gunman, the alleged police brutality, the alleged white supremacist cop, the alleged, allegedly shot. Only this time, eh, they know, oh no, they, why wow, these folks have taken a side. They've taken a position. Oh man, they took a position here. They're letting her know what's going on and letting the rest of us know what's going on there as well. Lest any of you get out of line and start thinking to yourselves that you can think for yourselves, you know, little silly thoughts like that will, of course, be beyond the pale. Now, here's the thing. I want to show you all something here. I want to show you something because I want you to get this. 720 degrees of analysis that you'll receive absolutely nowhere else. I want you to take a look at this for a moment. This is Rolling Stone magazine. And I want to show you something. Candace Owens is out of the Daily Wire after months of railing against Jewish people. The far right commentator has been clashing with founder Ben Shapiro. Founder Ben Shapiro over her endorsement of anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. So they're not giving you any opinion they're not leaving it up to you to decide what it is. They're telling you this is anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. Where black folk is alleged racism. All of a sudden here, it's Jewish people. It's, oh, there's no doubt. No, this is settled. This is an opinion. Now I want you to listen to the next parts. And I keep emphasizing this because this is critical, crucial, and key. And I do not want you to miss this. Far-right influencer Candace Owens is no longer with The Daily Wire after three years of working as a commentator for the network the company announced on Friday. Daily Wire and Candace Owens have ended their relationship. Daily Wire co-founder and CEO Jeremy Boring announced on X, Twitter, on Friday morning. Owens also confirmed on X that she would no longer be working with The Daily Wire, writing, quote, the rumors are true, I am finally free, before redirecting her followers to her website, adding there will be many announcements in the weeks to come. In a separate tweet, she linked to her YouTube channel, telling her followers she would be resuming posting content on there, quote, after a brief hiatus. Though neither Boring nor Owens publicly elaborated on the circumstances behind her departure, the announcement comes on the tail end of months of public friction between Owens and Daily Wire co-founder Ben Shapiro over their conflicting views on the Israel-Hamas war, as well as Owens' promotion of anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. Founded in 2015, The Daily Wire has been criticized for promoting anti-LGBT and transphobic content such as the Matt Walsh documentary, What is a Woman? Now, did you see that there? So their Rolling Stones problem with Daily Wire is, well, they've been criticized by whom for promoting anti-LGBT and transphobic content? That's what they say about The Daily Wire. So for Candace Owens, you're anti-Semitic. For The Daily Wire, well, they're anti-LGBT. Okay, not done yet. As Rolling Stone previously reported, Owens' feud with Shapiro has been percolating for months, starting with her criticism of the Israeli army's actions in Gaza. In November, she tweeted, quote, There is no justification for a genocide. I can't believe this even needs to be said or is even considered the least bit controversial to state. Her remarks were in response to the Israeli army siege in Gaza in retaliation to October 7th. Hamas-led terrorist attack, which left more than 1,160 people dead. To date, more than 30,000 Palestinians have been reported dead as a result of the IDF's initiative in Gaza. Initiative, don't you mean strikes? 
initiative, don't you mean strikes? Initiative, don't you mean strikes? Very interesting how that goes. Very interesting how that how that's being stated there. Very interesting how they did that, right? Just saying, boy, didn't say the IDF strikes in Gaza. Now, listen to the next part here. Shapiro, an observant Jew, criticized Owen's tweet saying during an event that, quote, her behavior during this has been disgraceful without a doubt. They proceeded to publicly bicker on social media for days with Shapiro urging Owens to, quote, quit and Owens accusing Shapiro of, quote, acting unprofessional and emotionally unhinged. In the following months, Owens has graduated from criticizing Israel's military actions to increasingly anti-Semitic rhetoric on social media, alluding to the existence of a sinister Jewish gang in Hollywood and accusing a fringe minority of Jews of being evil Marxists intent on gaining political power. She also recently liked a tweet accusing Rabbi Shumley Botich a longtime critic of Owens of being drunk on Christian blood, a reference to the anti-Semitic blood libel conspiracy theory that has been used to defend the persecution and murder of Jews for centuries. Owens has been repeatedly defend has repeatedly defended her friend Kanye West, who famously tweeted about going death con three on Jewish people and has publicly professed his admiration of Hitler. Now this is Rolling Stone. They're not the, the word allegedly hasn't come up yet. The word supposedly hasn't come up yet. They say hasn't come up yet. They're stating every single thing they're saying here is an absolute fact that their characterization is an absolute fact when in reality it is not. My goodness, do they have me defending Candace Owens? By, by the way, in reality, it's not. We'll get into that a little bit later. Despite Shapiro's public condemnation of her comments prior to Friday's announcement, Owens has seemingly been unconcerned about her status to the Daily Wire. As recently as earlier this month, she told Breakfast Club host Charlamagne Tha God that in response to Shapiro's remarks criticizing her, quote, I choose peace and I chose peace and he responded to the peace with not peace, adding, Ben doesn't have the power to fire me. Owens and the Daily Wire did not immediately respond to requests for comment. Now, here's my point. Folks, they just sat here and talked about Ben Shapiro. White supremacist arch fiend, Ben Shapiro, card carrying white supremacist monster who has defended the deaths of black people being murdered anywhere and everywhere he can. They talk about Candace Owens being anti-Semitic, not a word about the white supremacist Ben Shapiro, whose record is long, well-established and notorious. Now, isn't it very interesting that Rolling Stone sat up here and doesn't have a word to say about that? Now, isn't that interesting? A whole article, they talk about Ben Shapiro as an observant Jew. So let me get this straight. Ben Shapiro is now the good guys over there at the left wing Rolling Stone, right? What? Well, isn't that interesting? So Ben Shapiro is now your hero over there at Rolling Stone. Did you all catch that? There's a reason I wanted to read this article from top to bottom so that you see, oh, now your so-called left-wing media is a friend of Ben Shapiro and stomping for him. They're not pointing out his anti-black racism and behavior for years now. Not a word about his alt-right. You want to talk about conspiracy theories? I mean, this is a guy who thinks that black people are genetically inferior. You want to talk about conspiracy theory? When they start talking about black culture, when they start criticizing about George Floyd, his track record of anti-black racism and white supremacy is platinum plated, etched in stone. If you wanna talk about that, And yet Rolling Stone has had another word to say. Now, very interesting to this whole thing here. Never said a word to point that out. 
So now, all of a sudden, Ben Shapiro, the racist, is the good guy. And all of a sudden, they're backing him. Why, you would think that Ben Shapiro was just some quiet rabbi somewhere who's never done or said anything. He's just an observant Jew. He's also an observant white supremacist. He's also an observant anti-black racist. He's also that. And yet they completely leave that out. Why you would think that he was just some moderate individual. Bias much over there at the Rolling Stone magazine. Now I do not know if Mr. E.J. Dixon is Jewish but I do know that he sounds like a fellow white supremacist when you're saying all this about Candace Owens and not a word about Ben Shapiro, who has been notorious now for years. Ben Shapiro is the flip side of Nick Fuentes. The, there is no daylight difference between Ben Shapiro and Nick Fuentes when it comes to black people. The only thing that Ben Shapiro and Nick Fuentes are bickering over is which white supremacist faction should run the yard. That's all they're arguing over, but they're not arguing over whether white supremacy should exist and should dominate and should rule. They're not arguing over that. They're just arguing over which white supremacist vision should be embraced for the persecution and brutalization of black people. That's the only thing they argue over. There is no daylight between the two of them. They are peas in a pod. And Rolling Stone said nothing about that. There has not been a black person murdered in this country by white supremacists, suspected white supremacists, that Ben Shapiro has not come out defending the killing of. Consistently. Rolling Stone is worrying about anti-Semitism and conspiracy theories. This isn't a conspiracy theory. This is a confirmed fact. The Rolling Stone is deadly quiet on this. So I just want to take a moment to point that out. In case you thought that was enough, let's go over here to CNN by Oliver Darcy. Ben Shapiro's Daily Wire service ties with Candace Owens after her embrace of anti-Semitic rhetoric. I think you're going to find things look very similar over here. Dateline New York CNN, the Daily Wire, the right wing media outlet co-founded by Ben Shapiro said Friday that it had severed ties with Candace Owens, the far right commentator who has ignited the torrent of backlash in recent months for her repeated embrace of anti-Semitic rhetoric. Daily Wire and Candace Owens have ended their relationship. Jeremy Boeing, the chief executive of Daily Wire, said in a statement posted online, Owens confirmed the news in her own post writing, the rumors are true. I am finally free. Owens, a popular commentator, notorious for promoting misinformation and conspiracy theories on a wide range of topics. Listen close now. On a wide... Candace Owens, a popular commentator, notorious for promoting misinformation and conspiracy theories on a wide range of topics from vaccines to immigrants. Wait a minute. Hold your ass the hell up, CNN. Um, Candace Owens is one of these people here who's supporting the police. Was Candace Owens out here questioning? Who, who, who in the world has gotten hurt that Candace Owens has not questioned when it comes to black folk? George Floyd, did, wasn't she promoting a whole documentary about that one? Why, yes, you saw these white men on his neck for eight minutes, but that, that's not what killed him. That's not what killed him. No, not at all. That's not what killed him. Not at all. Uh huh. That didn't do very much there, now did it? Not at all. No, she, her running around for years saying things like that. Eh, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Those aren't conspiracy theories, don't you understand? Those aren't conspiracy theories. Those conspiracy... That doesn't count. You need to recognize where you 
coming from here, but that, that, that doesn't count. Not at all. Not at all. None of those were conspiracy theories. Trayvon Martin. Now that's, no, those are not wacky conspiracy theories and misinformation. She joined the Daily Wire in 2021. The outlet has stood by her for years. Over the years, despite her penchant for trafficking in extremist and dishonest rhetoric. Okay. Candace Owens made a career of being one of these blacks who hates blacks. Candace Owens claim to fame is being the reliable negress who hates black people. And she will say all the things, all the talking points that white supremacists, she'll give all the white supremacists talking points. She'll be a black person doing it. Now that's what her, what she is known for. And yet CNN ain't saying nothing about that. They're mentioning everything except that. The only thing that she's actually known for, and they're saying everything except that. Yeah, you're looking real white supremacist yourself over there, CNN, as if we didn't already know. Hint, hint, Freddie Gray. We talked about that years ago, too. But since the October 7th Hamas terror attack on Israel, Owens has repeatedly waded into anti-Semitic waters as she fiercely criticized Israel, suggesting the Jewish government was committing genocide in Gaza and claiming there is a sinister small ring of Jewish people in Hollywood and Washington, D.C. involved in something quite sinister. In November, Shapiro, who is Jewish, called out Owens for her disgraceful rhetoric, blasting her faux sophistication on the topic. Without directly naming Shapiro, Owens responded that one cannot serve both God and money, a brazen dig at the Daily Wire co-founder that was drenched in an age-old anti-Semitic trope. At the time, Shapiro hit back. Candace, if you feel that taking money from the Daily Wire somehow comes between you and God, by all means, quit. Now, do you notice they haven't said a word about Ben Shapiro's anti-black racism once again? So, Candace Owens anti-black self-hating racism CNN said the, the her only claim to fame the only reason that anybody knows who she is a young self-hating immigrant who hates black people that's her only claim to fame that's the only reason that she's known anywhere and yet they're not saying a word about that they're going on and on. Ben Shapiro, white supremacist demagogue. And the only thing that he's known for is wearing funny suits and hating black people. That's the only thing he's known for. And yet CNN, just like Rolling Stone, doesn't say a word about that. Yeah, they're all on code over there, aren't they? Damn! Yeah, they're all on code over there now, aren't they? Owens then attacked Shapiro. Now, isn't this amazing? So Shapiro hit, Shapiro, Shapiro responds and called, he called out Owens, not he attacked Owens. Shapiro hit back. Excuse me? He was the one who, he did like Hamas. Yes, I said that. He initiated the, uh, he initiated hostilities and they said that he's calling her out. She responded by not even mentioning him. He attacks her and the writer at CNN says that Shapiro hit back and then Owens attacked Shapiro. You guys aren't even good propagandists over there. Let me give you a hint, fellas. If you're going to try to turn public sentiment against Candace Owens, this ain't the way to do it. You guys are sloppy. You're amateurish. Filled with emotion. You're not even trying to craft together a proper narrative. In uh, Co Owens then attacked Shapiro in an interview with Tucker Carlson, the right-wing extremist who was fired last year from Fox News, accusing him of ad hominem attacks. Now, why is it they're not making these little comments they make about Owens and even about Tucker Carlson? Why is it that Mr. Oliver here has not made a similar 
footnote about Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro, a white supremacist, Ben Shapiro, who's made many racist comments against black people. So you notice they're using Ben Shapiro and as, as their hero here in their shield and they're not saying a negative word about him when that's the only thing he's known for is his racism. In recent days, Owens has continued to generate more controversy, liking a post on X in which a user accused a rabbi of being drunk on Christian blood. That rabbi, however, is a kind of shady individual. We'll come back to that. Owens' behavior earned her the praise of those pushing hatred on the Jewish community with the Anti-Defamation League noted Thursday when it blasted her for pushing an anti-Semitic agenda and fueling the fire of hate. Ben Shapiro don't fuel the fire of hate? Hey, Rolling Stone, does Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh, do they fuel the fires of hate? I've already shown you all what Matt Walsh has said about black folk by, over the last couple of months here. Um, by the way, uh, yeah, um, y'all are worried about feeling the fires of hate, CNN. Uh, yeah, uh, Ben Shapiro been lighting plenty fires. He's been lighting plenty of fires. And not a word of condemnation from CNN. Says here that Owens' behavior earned her praise. Okay, um, Owens responded by accusing the ADL of having turned their smear machine guns on her. Their attacks will have the opposite desired effect, Owens said. Awaken, world. While Owens will no longer have a home of the Daily Wire, she still re maintains a large platform. Her extremist commentary has catapulted her to fame in right-wing circles, and she boasts millions of followers across her various social media accounts. Now, do you all see the way they keep doing that? Do you notice the way they keep doing that? Have they referred to Ben Shapiro as a right-wing extremist? He was at the same, he worked at the same place as her, saying the same things as her about black people, and yet... CNN was not calling that right-wing extremism. Have they referred to Ben, the white supremacist Shapiro, as a right-wing extremist? Have they called him extremist at all? No, just like Rolling Stone, they're painting Ben Shapiro as the nice guy in the equation. You're looking real Nazi alt-right, CNN. Oh, the irony with it being Ben Shapiro. Boy, that changed real quick, didn't it? That changed real quick. That changed real damn fast, didn't it? Kind of hard to convince people that it's not a conspiracy when we see you conspiring. Why is it Ben Shapiro isn't an alt-right white supremacist right-wing extremist. Now, I say all that there because now I want to take you to somewhere different here. All right, Candace was feeling the heat. Candace was feeling the heat, so she decided to bring on this Jewish rabbi who wrote an article, really smearing her, to be totally honest. He wrote an article, and in the article... He was um, really attacking her and, you know, giving her the business about, oh, being anti-Semitic and this, that, and the other, even though he really has just, I mean, this guy wasn't reaching. He wasn't stretching. I mean, he was doing yoga, okay? He was, he, uh, this guy, they should have sent somebody else. No offense, Padre, but they should have sent somebody else, not you. You weren't ready. You weren't ready. They should have sent someone else. You wasn't ready, dude. You wasn't ready. Be that as it may, Candace brought him on for an interview. I'm not going to play the whole thing because it's almost two hours. I don't need to play the whole thing. I want to play for you some key parts because that's our job here. I go through all these things, whether it's presidential debates or whatever. 
I go through all these things and listen to them so that you all don't have to. And so you get all the insight analysis you need with very little of the boredom that would ordinarily be involved there. And I cut through all the garbage so you all can get just the facts. All right, let's go ahead and play a sound clip here to help put this in context for you, okay? Listen, and they go back and forth for a little bit, but there are certain parts I want you to hear. I want you to hear what the rabbi says because he was accusing, he wrote a whole article accusing her repeatedly of being anti-Semitic, 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 anti-Semitic. I mean, he was just really banging on it. So she was actually very calm, very well-reasoned, uh, very uh, even-tempered. And I want you to hear this part when she asks him to define what anti-Semitism is. Because he said that, well, anti-Semitism, it mutates, it changes, the definition changes. So listen to this. A definition based on the experience of black people it would be a remarkable power and I would be able to create something like BLM, which I'm going to just push back. Very, just And until that's, until that is understood, recognize that it is a unique hate. That if you define it as the, the, the that, that you should not be able to exist collectively. Mm -hmm. Okay. As a collective, they shouldn't have that right. That changes from the Middle Ages with religion, the 18th through 20th centuries about race. And then after Israel's created, it's a hatred based on the nation. And until that's until that is understood that 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 it is this isn't something that's really questioned about among academics, theologians, Jewish scholars. I, I'm not presenting it. I, this is why I thought I'm so optimistic about a dialogue. But I think part of it is you view that the hate can't mutate. And what I'm trying to tell you is that we have 2,000 years of history that demonstrate the exact opposite. So, and I, I'm, I'm going to just push back. So this guy is sitting up here telling you that anti-Semitism, it changes. The definition changes. It doesn't have just one definition. And it's whatever we say it is. He, literally, he said that you can't tell black people how to be offended about racism. So you can't tell us what is anti-Semitic. Candace Owens says, well, I want to address that. Just gently here. For me personally, if I thought that racism could just be an ever-shifting uh, definition based on the experience of black people, it would be a remarkable power and I would be able to create something like BLM, which could say that everything was racist. So I am not going to be able to agree that definition should be able to transform according to what's happening during the day. But here's what I will say. If you could, just because I think it's really important um, for us to get to going through this article, because then you might be able to explain why you view it as anti-Semitism. If you could just give us what you are saying the current definition of anti-Semitism is today, that would be very helpful. The current definition of anti-Semitism today has to do with what the feelings are. It has to do with anti-Zionism, number one. That is a definition. Anti-Zionism, anti-Israel is anti-Semitism. Well, okay, I'm very glad he cleared that up. So he's telling you anti-Zionism and anti-Israel, whatever he defines it as, that is being anti-Semitic. So he's outright saying, and that's what I'm saying. Oh, they should have sent somebody else. Yes, he said their feelings, whatever he feels it is, whatever he feels it is at that moment, that's what it is. And by the way, we got almost 7,000 people in here live tonight. So go ahead and give me a thumbs up in the chat room and hit the likes button for me. We got a lot of ground here to cover. Now he's telling you that anti-Semitism is eh, whatever he wants it to be at that moment. It's, it, it's okay, whatever I want it to be. You are saying the current definition of anti-Semitism is today. That would be very helpful. The current definition of anti-Semitism today has to do with what the feelings are. It has to do with anti-Zionism, number one. That is a definition. Anti-Zionism, anti-Israel is anti-Semitism. Okay, this so you believe that Jewish people can be anti-Semitic? Absolutely. Okay, so, so 
when you see and, a gathering we're, we're, of Jewish people who say, you know, I'm Jewish, but I don't support Israel or Bibi Netanyahu, you say that person's an that person can be anti-Semitic. You just did two different things and was very, uh, you just did. Okay, I'll go ahead and let that one there go. So this is the guy who's tell locked arms with Ben Shapiro and oh, you're anti-Semitic and he was just asked to define it. If you're anti-Zion, anti-Israel and whatever we feel it is, dude, you are doing the impossible right now is what you're doing. We thought that this was simply against the laws of physics. Now be damned if you are not doing that. Now, here's another clip here of him talking about October 7th, the attacks uh, by Hamas on Israel. And listen to what he says, because he says this over and over and over and over and over again during this interview. Not really realizing what October 7th was. October 7th is unique in recorded human history as the ugliest day of humanity. What was done on October 7th? Taking a young woman, taking her phone to videotape her being raped on the corpse of her dead boyfriend and then shot on it and sending that video to her parents. Beheading a man with a garden hoe, kicking a woman until her body parts fall off, is, is unique in terms of the intention to attack civilians. Okay, now that's where you're wrong. That's not unique. We've been living with that in America now for centuries. We've been living with that in the United States now for centuries codified by law. We've been dealing with that. The murder of Emmett Till that the United States government refused and Mississippi refused to prosecute. We've been living with that the whole damn time. Black folk get killed all the time, dismembered all the time. Nobody gets prosecuted. Just black person disappears. Oh, you just find him somewhere. Black person disappears. Oh, he got hung somewhere. And as far as it happening on video, uh, back the badge. All you got to do is back the badge. Down there in Georgia, they've been letting cops go left and right now for violating black people's rights. You want to talk about that kind of thing happening? No, it's only unique if you're not, it's only unique if you're not black. Is you, you, then you think it's unique. We're sitting up here yelling about it and all of a sudden ain't, ain't nothing happening. Daniel Holt's claw was able to rape up and down the damn countryside. Oh, well. Oh, well. No, fella, it ain't unique. It really isn't. It wasn't unique for George Floyd. It wasn't unique for Emmett Till. It wasn't unique for James Byrd. It wasn't unique for them. You want to talk about folk black, about people getting dismembered. America wrote the book on that with us and continues and continues to do so. Going to skip forward here to another clip. Yeah, I listened to the whole thing here to make sure you all had all the inside analysis that you required here. Well, let's skip, skip forward a little bit here. Boy, this guy starts reaching and he really just doesn't quit. You chose to bring Hitler on, not them. I did, and I, I have no... Now, they're talking about when she made a comment um, about nationalism, and she said that Hitler was what people think when they think about nationalism, and that she, she's, she defends nationalism, not globalism, and that basically Hitler gave nationalism a bad name, and that's the problem. All right, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing what she said there, but then he's responding that, oh, that's... She's, she's saying that Hitler was okay, which she did not say. She did not say that Hitler was okay. She said nationalism's okay. She never said Hitler was okay. So this guy, I got to tell you, fella, you are doing the impossible right now. You really, really are. Oh, I'm, I, I, if I could go backwards in the context of trying to understand why Americans think that nationalism is a bad word, it was appropriate for me to bring off Adolf Hitler it is totally appropriate in any capacity when you are talking about history and historical sentiments to bring up any relevant 
character that has created those sentiments. So are, I just want to, again, I just want to yes or no. Yeah. After watching so, that, in we, I, I want to make sure we don't run out of time here. After watching that in context, do you think it is fair that you wrote, she publicly said that Hitler was okay? Hitler was okay. Yeah. Yes, by bringing me even into the conversation, yes, I do. Okay, great. Let's move on here, because, um, again, this discussion, we're having it between us, but I, I, I want the public to be able to... So, yeah, I mean, he's... Uh... Standing by that there now, I want to play for you what she actually said because she, uh, so you can have context here. I want to play for you the comment that she actually said. Now, he wrote in his article, Candace Owens, she's a dropout and kicked out of school or student loan debt, whatever, and uh, she said that Hitler was okay. I want to play for you what she actually said here. Elitists that actually want globalism. Globalism is what I what I don't want. So when you think about whenever we say nationalism, the first thing people think about in at least in America is Hitler. You know, he was a national socialist. But if Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. The problem is is that he wanted he had dreams outside of Germany. He wanted to globalize. He wanted everybody to be German, everybody to be speaking German, everybody to look a different way. That's not to me. That's not nationalism. So again. Okay, now let me go ahead and say one thing here. Uh, Mr. Jewish Rabbi, you and Jeremy Borish and uh, Ben Shapiro, none of y'all had a problem with her when she was talking like this years ago. You didn't have, you can went to go dig these clips up. You wasn't talking against her then. How the hell y'all gonna sit up here and jump up and all of a sudden got some phony ass outrage? If she made those comments years ago, you didn't have a problem with it then. They didn't have a problem bringing her to the Daily Wire then. She was saying this stuff for years. And you never said a word. It was all cool in the gang. Now, all of a sudden, you're outraged about stuff that you heard her saying years ago? Why didn't you make an issue of this years ago when she said it? If it was so offensive. No, what you did was you went Googling was what you did. You went Googling for Candace Owens and Hitler, and that was the only thing you came up with. Buddy, you are doing the impossible right now, dude. You are making, of all people, C -C Candace Owens. You're making her look like the reasonable person in the damn room. What? Dude! They ought to take you to the Kern reactor and see if they can duplicate you because you are you are accomplishing the physical physically impossible. You got Candace Owens looking like the damn good guy around here. Where we at? Oh, where in the hell am I? I don't even know where I'm at tonight. I feel like I'm in the middle of the coon zone. What is happening here? You had years to say all this. You were dead ass quiet. Now you're outraged about it. I don't believe you. Just when you thought he couldn't go in. Yes, he says more. Just when you thought he couldn't make his situation any worse. He does this several times. I'm only going to give you just this one clip, but he does this several times during the interview, several times. She's a black such and such. She's a female such and such. She's whatever it may be. He's talking about this, uh, this, the, the other rabbi Shumley, who Michael Jackson apparently has some negative words to say about. Um, this Shumley guy was, is, according to Candace, he's, him and his daughter spent two years going around running her down and threatening her online and everything else. So she responded back to them one time and they've just been attacking her ever since. The rabbi is taking issue with Candace Owens. He called the uh, other Jewish rabbi. He said that she, he's not holy. And I think they actually own a store where they sell sex toys. I think Candace's issue is this other Jewish rabbi, him and his daughter, they have like a, either an online site or an online store where they sell sex toys. I mean, triple X rated sex toys, whole damn nine yards. And so she took issue with that. And she said, he's not very holy. And his daughter is a hag because they have been trolling and harassing her for all this time. The rabbi said that Candace shouldn't be responding. Oh, no, no, no. Don't worry. I got all that. Oh, I got all that. 
And if someone is saying a bad thing about you, I would even go and defend you as well for them saying that she's a black such and such, she's a female such and such, she's whatever it may be. If he's attacking you, and again, I'm not privy to those two years of, of attacks that you have. But the moment you start saying things like an unholy rabbi, when you do not know a rabbi's job and you don't know Judaism, you don't know what is considered kadosh, what is considered holy or not holy Jews. When the moment you make those kind of comments, you've crossed a line and you didn't need to make them. I get you're angry. I get you feel violated by him. I get you feel he, that he attacks you unjustifiably. I haven't been part of the discussions, so I, he may have. But that doesn't ever give you then the right to say what you said. And it demonstrates, again, a pattern of behavior of, a, of an unawareness that you have about Jewish theology, a lack of awareness you have about Jewish history, and about anti-Semitism. The fact that you can't accept what all academics, what the academics, I shouldn't say all because everything at all, but what academics, what Lord Sachs, what theologians all accept about that anti-Semitism is the unique ache that mutates. What Prager has done a Prager U video on. What? Oh yeah. He just invoked Dennis Prager. I mean, this is what I'm telling you. There are no good guys in this scrap right here. There are no heroes in this scrap. This is a hardcore, triple X rated Nazi white supremacist slugfest going on here. This is the rabbi up here citing Dennis Prager and Prager U. And we all, their white supremacist credentials are legendary at this point. Yeah, that's who he is citing here as uh, the authorities on what anti-Semitism is. Well, I guess they should know they've been anti-black forever. Oh, no, 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 folks. I didn't bring receipts. I brought invoices. I'm not here to tell you what you paid. I'm here to tell you what you owe. Now, I've given you the withering detail and analysis you'll receive absolutely nowhere else. So he mentions Dennis Prager here. Um, some folks just don't know when to stop when they're ahead. You know what? The next clip here, I'm going to go around this and I'm going to try to get this wrapped up here within the next few minutes because we got more to cover, by the way. I want to get this video here wrapped up because the, the video is an hour and 43 minutes. But, um, I get the next clip. I'm going to actually come back to that. Let me come back to that. I want you to listen to the next thing here. Okay. This is Candace Owens talking. And she's talking about this, this Jewish rabbi who was attacking her for two years now. Coming back to that again. Use your words here. Lack of knowledge or lack of wisdom. How do you think the public perceives that when I'm the one that's being attacked? I'm not concerned about how the public perceives it or not. Okay. What I'm concerned about is that, and you see that black woman who's politically conservative. Okay, now this is like where he's just, this is where he's, he wrote this article and he starts to describe, he's talking about the rabbi who was attacking her that he's defending and he was talking about her. So I want you to listen to what, she's reading his words from the article here and I just want you to see what she, what uh, he said while she's talking. And then they see you write something, please let me finish my said. statement, please let me finish my statement. They see you write something. Rabbi Shmuley is an author of 31 books, was the rabbi at Oxford for 11 years, has a 30-year career of writing, speaking, preaching, and guiding people in Jewish beliefs. He has also been an activist in many causes, and most importantly, is a, most importantly, is a loving father of nine children, and like any father, he defends his children when attacked and is proud of their accomplishments. Hold, hold, because I never attacked them first. They've been attacking me consistently for two years. And then you go on, hold on, hold on. Candace, you're smarter than this. I know, but just let me finish, let me finish. Then you go I'm on and you talk about me. This, people might say this might be a racist trope, but here we go. She dropped out of college because of a quote unquote issue with a student loan, never even voted in elections until she had successfully created her unique brand, a pretty black woman who's politically conservative. When anyone right. confronts her about her lack of knowledge or wisdom, she retreats to the position of counterattacking them for not appreciating a strong black woman who goes against every Ever, goes against the stereotype. When you times, read right? something like that and you see that comparison and how 
you are presenting people, despite the fact that, factually speaking, Rabbi Shmuley and his daughter were the ones attacking me for two years straight. I didn't even know who they were. When you talk about, when you speak about me like that and make it seem like I'm, I'm sorry, let me use your words here, lack of knowledge or lack of wisdom, how do you think the public perceives that when I'm the one that's being attacked? I'm not concerned about how the public perceives it or not. Okay. What I'm concerned about is if you believe, and I cannot judge this because I'm not con I'm not aware of two years. I don't follow you. Okay? Just uh, my life is too busy. I got a congregation and, and, and teenagers and all sorts of things. If you believe that Shmuley Boteoff and his, his daughter are doing things that are attacking you on a personal level, not attacking your persona, not attacking what you do. I'm not calling you as anti-Semite, is attacking you for how you act, not attacking you as a human being. Please understand there is a difference of who we are and how we are. She dropped out of college. Is, wait, please let me not, finish. Okay, go ahead. Is attacking you. If he is attacking you on any personal way, that doesn't mean it's okay for you to attack him. You know better than that. Now, did you just hear what he said? He's talking about the other Jewish rabbi now. And he just told her, you know, if he, simply because he attacked you, that doesn't make it okay for you to attack him. Let me play it again. The human being. Please understand there is a difference of who we are and how we are. She dropped out of college. Wait, wait please let me not, finish. Shmuley okay, go ahead. Is attacking you. If he is attacking you on any personal way, that doesn't mean it's okay for you to attack him. You know better than that. By the way, fella, it's not great for a white man to be telling a black woman, including a bed wench, you know better than that. But then again, in her case, she got it coming. Uh, folks, yes, I'm playing for you his words here. He, I told you he, he is achieving the physically impossible. He's like the Green Lantern Corps. He's turning Candace Owens into the good guy here. He's got, he is more unreasonable and whacked out than she is. This fella is a cheat. I'm, I'm convinced she paid him. She had to have compensated him to come in here and say this insanity juxtapositioned against her. It's too damn easy to show how unhinged she is. And yet he comes in here to hold my beer. Watch me do a handstand on my eyelashes. No, seriously. I mean, this fella is amazing. I mean, just when you think that the most outrageous stuff you're going to hear is going to be from her, here he jumps up. He's just like, oh, let me wipe the slate clean. Anti-Semitism is whatever I want it to be. And, well, just because we attacked you doesn't mean you can attack us. And Dude, do you hear yourself? Do you hear your, I'm convinced he does, he, he's, this is upside down world. Is he off his meds? Dude. So clearly he didn't think this over before he said anything, he didn't think a damn thing over. Let me go ahead and skip forward a little bit here. They're talking about something else. Wait, 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 you I, did, I you asked it, I'm, I'm ready to answer it. I think it was evil. And it, you know, if you, if. Okay, yeah, they're back to talk. He's. At the end of the interview, he's back to drilling her about, was October 7th uniquely evil? He He's trying to make it where this is some really special, you know, really unique event. We lost more people in not on 9-11. And I'm not saying that either one is good, but what I'm saying is he keeps trying to classify that as a unique thing. Oh, well, this is unique in human history. Sir, that's an insult to our intelligence. That's an insult to our conscience for you to say that. Was it wrong? Sure. Evil? Absolutely. But to try to sit up here and say this occupies some unique space so you get special dispensation. Dude, this is an overreach. This is just not thinking. Wait, 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 you I, did. I you asked it. I'm, I'm ready to answer it. I think it was evil. And it, you know, if you if you feel it's you uniquely, it's evil, he bombed you a million Iraqi civilians. We're talking about just like, if you're weighing against civilian costs, 
and again, I think while how you said about when you read the, you know, you watch the Passion of the Christ and you have, you know, your eyes when you watch it and I have my Christian eyes, very difficult for me to say when the greatest Holocaust that ever happened was against Christians and what the Bolsheviks did to us, drowning us in barges. I cannot, like, I, I cannot discount the things that have happened to Christians. We are actually the most persecuted religion in the world and it's never described as uniquely evil. And so what happened on October 7th is evil, full stop. What has happened in the past to Christians, what is happening currently to Christians in Armenia, it's evil. So I, I, I so, okay, your so feeling that I'm it's unique make, is probably, you know, I'm, is, is pro I'm, I want to recognize it, I, I but I don't, I don't want question, to then. sit here okay, and, okay. and pretend I, I that I'm going to make a simpler question then. I'll make I minimize what, what I've been through. I mean, unique evils, slavery. I'm a black woman. I mean, there's tons of things that have happened, and I don't want I don't want to pretend that I think that what when it happens to Jews, it's somehow more evil or more unique than when it happens to other groups okay, all I'm, around the I'm world. Gonna ask you, I'm going to ask you a specific, simpler question. Do you believe there is a qualitative difference between what was done on October 7th and the horrible tragedies that are going on in Gaza with children being used as human shields and dying? With, with and being killed, with all of that. There are tragedies going on in Gaza, we both agree on. Do you believe that there is a, a radical difference between what happened October 7th and what is going on there? Or do you believe that there is really not a moral uh, and, and, and huge qualitative difference? It's one of the- How it's other. happening is different. How it's happening is different. There's no you question that it's different. Same, it's evil, just the same way. Children, innocent children dying, if the consequence of children is dying, of course, it is It is an evil thing for innocent children to be dying. I mean, Do you believe? Okay, so, so I want to make sure I'm hearing. So he's trying to get special consideration to say, yes, but what's happened to us is uniquely evil. All right. I want to go back in the video here because I've gone forward like an hour and 14 minutes. I want to go back to about one hour in the video one hour in the interview and I want to play something. I want to play something and Candace, we are now shifting from me just talking about this to observing this as a teaching moment. That's what we're going to do right now. And I'm going to, I'm not the rabbi. I'm the instructor here. You know, you can call me the authority. And I would like to play your words, Candace, and I hope you'll remember this. It turns a lot of people into extremists overnight, and they become very but extreme in their language. You have, no, you no. Have it turns. Just saying that. Twenty seconds into your video, you make the comment about it being, I believe that's the time space. You make the comment that you have a moderate stance, and everything else is extremist. And what I'm trying to explain to you is that once, and I hope once you see the idea of film, we can have another dialogue. Well, no, I'm just, I'm just saying that I do think that when anything, you know, horrific happens, it turns a lot of people into extremists overnight, and they become very extreme in their language. You have, no, you no. have judged. You, you have, you've, yeah, you've not, you've not, you've not let me finish my statement, okay? I've let it, you talk very much. What I have said is that when anything happens, what tends to happen, what tends to happen after that is people become very extreme in their rhetoric. And actually there is a really good example is it Joel over at Breitbart who wrote something very extreme following October 7th online. And then a couple of days later, he wrote a long paragraph apologizing and saying why he was emotional, why his rhetoric was extreme and what he actually wants to accomplish. He recognized his own emotion and people get very extreme when they're emotional, it's understandable. But when they are in that emotion, they start to perceive other people who are actually saying what they've always said as somehow attacking them or saying something that's wrong. And then usually, you know, the scales fall from their eyes, the more distance there is from the actual event that took place, and they're able to hear things more rationally again. That is all that I was saying with Tucker, is I haven't really moved any of my stances whatsoever, and that is why people are bothered. Whether you think that's understandable or not is not going to change things. I do want to get to this, though, because like I said, we're not going to agree on Rabbi Shmuley. We're not going to agree on his daughter. I'm not going to agree on your interpretation that my defense of myself is somehow anti-Semitism. I intend to keep defending myself against somebody that I, uh, you know, view to be absolutely right, despicable. Sure. And actually, what I will say is that in terms of anti-Semitism, I think a lot of it uh, stems from what I, what I would say is individuals feeling that 
amidst their own communities, let's remove, let's remove Jews from this. If a black person does something wrong, I immediately call it out on my show. I've said tons of things about black people acting like thugs. I've stood up against black people when they were using racism, um, basically just to absolve themselves from any critique. But when it comes to the Jewish community, it's very odd, I think, to watch the indefensible get defended, right? The indefensible get defended. Like what Rabbi Shmuley, what Rabbi Shmuley did over the last two years, black people acting like thugs, amidst their own communities, let's remove, let's remove Jews from this. If a black person does something wrong, I immediately call it out on my show. I've said tons of things about black people acting like thugs. I've stood up against black people when they were using racism, um, basically just to absolve themselves from any critique. But when it comes to the Jewish community, it's very odd. Yeah, Candace. As a matter of fact, that's right. That is what you made a career doing. That is exactly what you've done from day one. And I got a question to ask you, little girl. How'd that work out for ya? Damn! How'd all that boot licking and ass kissing and don't worry, boss, sit back, boss, I'll go after them niggers for you. How'd that work out for you, Candace? I'll show you how it worked out for you. It worked out like this. I'll show you how it worked out for you. It worked out like this. You spent all that time. Well, don't worry. Why? Take a look at how I treat black people. Uh, I, I don't respect them. I have no problem calling them out. They're acting like thugs. How'd that work out for you? Now that we're at the other end of it, how'd that work out for you, kid? Did you ever get that pat on the back and the star on the forehead you was looking for? Did you ever get that acceptance? Or were you the only dummy in the room who didn't recognize and understand that your days were already numbered? Were you the only one who didn't get it? Were you the only one who didn't recognize? Were you the only one who didn't see it? Because we saw it. I certainly saw it. We saw how it was going to end for you. We saw how it was going to go for you. And it appears that the only person who didn't know, the only person who didn't see, the only person who didn't get it was you. You're the only one. You spent all that time doing that. Thinking that you were buying something. You thought you were buying protection. You thought you were buying provision. You thought that you were buying some special dispensation. In other words, you told yourself that you were buying a permanent seat on the porch with the house niggas next to Massa. That's what you told yourself you were doing. And lo and be damn hold. As predictable as the sun rising in the morning. All we had to do was wait a minute. And the very same white supremacist males that you've been smooshed up and booed up with all this time. Those are the ones who went public to bounce your ass out the door as publicly as they could. Just that quick, just that simple, no fuss, no muss. Hell, they didn't even hear about an incident this week. It's just like, okay, she's done. She's done. We're cool on that. She's done. And put. Pathetically, you sat here in front of this rabbi and pathetically thought that you were now going to cash in all that goodwill. Well, hey, I've been on y'all's team all this time. I'm on your side. Don't you understand? I'm on your side. And they just sat up here and literally told you we're white. I know they keep saying we're Jewish, but... We're white and we say so. 
and you don't see anybody in the white media coming to your defense. The next time somebody tries to tell you there's a difference between being Jewish and being white, by the way, I couldn't help but notice there's no one in the Gentile media, if you will, who is riding to her defense either. None of them pointing out where the rabbi here is obviously just lying and making things up. They ain't coming to your rescue, baby. Where's your Fox News friends? They're not coming to your rescue. Where are they? All these folks that you thought you were getting in good with all this time. Where are they? What she's doing right now, let me tell you exactly what Candace is doing right now. I'll tell you exactly what Candace is doing, exactly what she thinks she's doing, what she thinks she's doing. And she thinks she's going to crawl back into her hole. She's going to get on YouTube. She's going to say, okay, Daily Wire has helped me to build a larger audience than I had. Now, all those people are going to gravitate over here and I'm going to have a permanent power base. Well, I certainly think that she's going to remain influential, at least in her circles. And I certainly don't think she's going to be starving anytime soon. But let's understand, baby. What if this is just the beginning? What if this is just the beginning of them going at you and weighing down on you? What if it's just the start? She hadn't thought that over. What if this is just the beginning? So you can tell yourself you'll retreat to YouTube or Rumble or wherever you're going to pop up there next. And you'll take your following with you. She got like 3 million subscribers on YouTube. It's about to get put to the test. It's about to get put to the test. Yes, sir. Bedwinch Chronicles. Candace Owens edition gets her Negro wake up call. Only instead of hearing an alarm clock, it sounds more like... Yeah, they tied her up, strapped her down to the railroad tracks. Yeah, that's her, that's her alarm clock for your Negro wake up call. Hold still. Hold still while the conductor does what he does. Folks, here's the bottom line. The bottom line is she put her eggs in the basket of white supremacists and told herself the age old lie that she's the favored Negro in the room, that she's the pet Negro. She, when the rabbi said to talk about, she was uh, a good looking female and this, that, and the other, she'd been trying to trade on that ever since, baby. First of all, wall incoming, but second of all, that don't matter. They don't care about your blackness. And what they just showed you is they don't care about your ovaries either. They ragdolling you. They ragdolling you and the white media. And where are the feminists? Oh, where are the feminists? Candace Owens don't have a friend in the world right now. No feminists, no black support, no pro-black support. Baby, you on your own. And what you're doing right now is crossing your damn fingers and hoping against hope that your white fan base online is going to stand by you the way they have in the past. Only you don't have Daily Wire's money anymore to uh, bail you out. You don't have it anymore. Now you got to sink or swim on your own. Now you're about to find out where they really come down. Hell of a spot to be in. And whose side do you take? I mean, for the white supremacist community, whose side do you take here, man? I mean, on the one hand, you've got Solid, solid white supremacist males like Matt Walsh and, 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 and Ben Shapiro. And on the other side, you've got your delicious chocolate dirty secret, Candace Owens. So it's, uh, who do you back here? I mean, you, you need to stand strong by the dudes, but Candace, Candace, uh, it makes you feel like a natural white supremacist. I don't know. It's. Who do you stand by here? It's a tough ass choice for those people. It's tough for them. They don't know what to do. They, they got to go back and forth. They Because last week they were all supporting the Daily Wire. This week they have to abandon the Daily Wire for, for, for Candace? Uh, I don't know about that. I don't know if that's the way that's going to work out. 
I don't know if that's the way it works, but we're going to find out. Just a brief reminder here. We have over 7,000 people in the chat room. A brief reminder. Our crowdfunding for the new documentary film, 8 a.m., is up and going here. And for those of you who are unaware, a brief reminder for you. We've grown up in a sea of white supremacy. I think that what uh, slavery did for us is it created this sense that the white man's ice is colder and that we want to have a seat at that table and not a seat at our own table. At LSU, we never had a conversation about the business of sports, about the money that's made. They don't want to have that conversation because you have that conversation, that's what creates movements. Most people are miserable. They're depressed. They hate their life. Why do people hate their life? Because they're doing things they hate because they feel like they're scared they can't pay a bill. George Soros probably said it the best, and he said that when he was broke, nobody listened to him, but when he broke the banks over in Europe, he was able to start talking to the heads of state. Are you listening? Is this thing on? Let me tell you about the record industry. When you walk into a major company, they got some of the prettiest women. You want some Perrier, you want some water. What, you, what do you need? The ones they got you, it was just like that. What have you done for me lately? A lot of those athletes in college, 99% of them would not make it to that high level NBA, WNBA, NFL. If an artist is not a puppet, he's not going to be pulled to the top. It's the bottom line. Friends is friends and business is business. Never in the 20. We have the opportunity to speak the way that we do because we have a new black media here and this is our ongoing effort to tell our story. Candace Owens missed the boat, but it was all too predictable. The link for our Indiegogo and our crowdfunding is in the description of the video. The mods have it in the chat room there as well. We're in the last eight, uh, last nine days of it here. So definitely for those of you who've been waiting on that, this is your opportunity to join that also. I want to thank everyone who has contributed to support tonight's program here on PayPal, Venmo, Super Chat. Thank you very much here, Cyberdyne, my man, Mr. Richburg, everyone else here. Thank you very much for your support. Also, a big shout out to my man, Mr. Vincent. I told you all that I was the greatest of all time. I told you today I'm still the greatest of all time. Shout out to my man, Mr. Vincent. Thank you very much for your support here as well, brother, especially. We're going to take a very brief commercial, non-commercial break. When we come back, we'll see about opening up the telephone lines. This is the Black Channel. Hello, my name is Steve Burgess. And I'm the author of this book, Guidelines for the Successful Student, a closer look at parenting your school-aged child. In this book... I've explained the role of the parent and the student in addition to what accommodations, procedures, rewards and consequences and expectations that need to be in place to ensure student success from primary to high school. This book is available on Amazon.com. For more information, please visit my link tree at Easy One on One and to access my latest podcast, A Teaching Moment with Mr. B. Thank you all for listening. A white supremacist assassin seeks revenge. Corrupt FBI agents with evil intentions. Dangerous black collaborators dedicated to treason. Occam Jeffers must defeat them all and somehow survive. One misstep and he's a dead man. Join Occam Jeffers as he looks the devil in his blue eyes and tells him, 
Black First, a sequel to the underground hit War of the Heart, Spirit of 1811 Publishing presents God Love Us, on sale at Amazon. Pre-order and save today. Visit spiritof1811publishing.com and show your love. Order yours today to experience all the benefits of Ash Kick and Natural Body Butter. With skin so smooth and soft, you'll thank us for it. Shop Ash Kick and online. That's A S H K I C K I N dot com. Hi, this is Brenda Starr, creator of Poetry with a Purpose and author of the book, Press But Not Crushed. Press But Not Crushed is an anthology of political poems that address current and historical issues in American descendants of slave population and African American population. The book describes slavery and its residuals, Jim Crow segregation, social depredation, and other relevant issues to American descendants of slaves and African Americans, including the current political climate that does not address our issues. This is the Black Channel. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, the Black Authority. Very glad to be with you all here this evening here. And the telephone lines are now open. The number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933. Your personal access code to the Blackest Radio Program in existence. The only one of its kind on planet Earth today. And as always, you are welcome to join us. Uh, let me go ahead and also say here that um, for those of you who didn't know, although you may be able to see that there, um, I'm still need to send out an announcement about that, I guess. Uh, for members here, so we got uh, folk have been asking me for the longest time to open up memberships here on the Black Channel here on YouTube. Folks have been asking me about that forever. Got a bunch of folks who've done that as well, so we accommodated you for that. So big shout out there. We got some more folks I see who became members here tonight. So definitely welcome to the Haven of Intelligent Black Thought. As always, we appreciate that. And the phone lines are now open. The number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933. We're talking tonight about the Negro Bedwinch wake-up call. Candace Owens. Candace Owens gets the boot at the Daily Wire. She's got to be rethinking a whole bunch of things. Rethinking that mortgage. Rethinking that car payment. Rethinking the future across the board here. Old dude over there at Daily Wire had some connections. But then again, I don't know. This actually could go the other way. What if she kicks off a revolt over there and it hurts the Daily Wire, which is what a lot of people are suggesting and suspecting is going to be the outcome that the Daily Wire is going to experience a diminution, if you will. A lot of folks are suspecting that that's what's going to occur. In any case, you've got a right wing internal civil war going on over there. They're going at it hammer and tong in the middle of an election year. Be there or be square. The telephone number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933. Your personal access code to the Black Channel. Let me get caller from area code 206. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi. Good evening. This is Agnes calling from Seattle. Okay, Agnes from Seattle, what's on your mind? Hi, um, I just wanted to say uh, excellent, very thorough analysis. Um, once again, uh, white supremacy always breaks its tools. Uh, Candace kicked over a hornet's nest when she uh, thought that she could talk out of turn and talk out of the side of the neck to those folks over there wearing small hats. And see, small hats stay on code. They may have their internal disagreements with each other, but the second you say something out of place, especially when you're black and female, it doesn't matter where you stand, they will come with that I'm white and I say so card regardless. And I do believe 
This is just the beginning. She just got a, a teaspoon of what's in store. Thank you very much, B1. B1 says, thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. I mean, they gave her the full, you need to submit to however we feel. It is, what you're saying is wrong. Whatever we say is wrong, that's wrong. I mean, boy, they took it to a whole new level. Let me get called from Erico 323. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, good evening, big brother Jason. It's brother Elijah calling on a week in Maryland. All right, brother Elijah, the week was on your mind. Um, brother, I I got a question for you because um, I, I got so um, many thoughts going in my mind about this sister, um, Candace Owens, or not sister, if she if um, for appropriate term. I I, I learned so much um, about her. You know, she had a racial incident when she was going to school, high school. Black people got behind her, and I'm trying to figure this out over the years. I think the NAACP got behind her, too, and she won a lawsuit, something of that nature. I'm trying to figure out who or what was it that gave her this satanic pill one day to wake up one morning and just decide she just hates all black people. And my whole thing is when I listen to this woman, she could have been a wonderful spokesperson for us but she was just she was a she's just a chocolate covered anti-black um white supremacist i'm trying to figure out when where did that come from uh came from your upbringing it came from the neighborhood it came from her parents it came from being an awkward chick you got to understand there's a lot of folks out there that they're carrying their high school years through their whole life for them so Yes, Most likely when she was in school and whatnot, she didn't get the level of respect, if you will, or deference from black folk that she felt she should get. So very clearly you can see she's got a very inflated sense of ego about her and she expects folks to bow yes, to her. So she's when you get accustomed to that kind of pet treatment, then you start looking at the rest of us and expecting us to do the same thing. And if they don't respond like that, well, OK, if I can't run y'all, I'll wreck y'all. So. Beware when you see that kind of mentality, but that's the that's that's the position she comes at it from. If I can't run y'all, I'll wreck y'all. The other thing is they get very there's power, relatively speaking. I mean, there's we yes, talk sir. about this phenomenon forever, you know, these these black folk who try to pretend to be right wingers and white supremacists, faux white supremacists. Well, you're the only one in the room. But you see, they've given you a token position. So it's easier to get elevated when there are fewer positions available. So she went to a place that has some token positions available. Yeah, if you're willing to sell your soul and sell your dignity, sure. So she's like, okay, well, let me get one of those seats. And so when you have these deficient Negroes who are willing to, they're, they're so desperate for clout, attention, status of some kind, they don't really have a skill set that works. Let's be clear. Candace Owens would not be a good spokesperson for black people. No, she wouldn't. Yes, sir. She'd be another Ilhan Omar. She'd be another, you know, um, she'd be another Sheila Jackson Lee. She'd be another Kamala Harris, an articulate chick that fellas thought was cute in her 20s. But otherwise, she, she doesn't have any grounding in the soil. She talks about being black as an academic exercise, just like Barack Obama, just like Kamala Harris. They talk about being yes, black sir. as if they were white people. So she doesn't have the credentials and she doesn't have the touch with the soil. She doesn't have the grounding to be able to speak for us. If she attempted to do so, it would just be real weird and weak and awkward. And she'd be talking about anime and manga the whole time. So thank you very much for giving us. Oh, and rappers and smoking weed. She would be talking about rappers and smoking weed the whole time. That's what she'd be talking about. It would just be real cringe. It'd be real awkward. Hell, she doesn't even defend herself well against this rabbi sitting up here attacking her. She doesn't even defend her black credentials well against him. 
How she's gonna? How is she gonna defend an entire nation of people? She is deficient and sucks at defending herself. She is divorced from blackness, and she's been that way the whole time. Call from Erico eight one five. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, Jason. It's Bill calling out of Rockford, Illinois. All right, Bill out of Rockford, Illinois. What's on your mind? So. Like, this chick, you know, like, I don't even know how to explain her. She's she's really a disaster. And then she said in her interview that, oh, well, I just, I, I call out the thugs and this and that and this, but I never heard her say anything about what happened in Mississippi with the goon squad. You know what I'm saying? One knows a gang of thugs, she ain't call them out. I never no, no, heard she, her say she would be word. She would be too busy cheerleading for them if she did. So just, you know, that's what that would be. Yeah, that whole situation is disaster. They only got, they only given out 17 years. They didn't even charge those guys with attempt murder or nothing. They just let them go with whatever charges they put on them. But he shot the guy in the mouth. They never charged him with attempt murder. If I, if I went out and shot somebody in the mouth, of course they had charged me with attempt murder. If so you, I, if I, you I shot a cop pressure. in his pinky toe, it would be attempted murder. Exactly. So I, I just don't get it how they how, how they only getting seventeen years. The max is forty years on an attempt murder. They give uh, out here in Rockford, Rockford, Illinois. You do an attempt murder, you looking at thirty years, and that's just on a, a regular civilian. So it, it's it's ridiculous. Like, and these guys are supposed to hold, uphold the law, but at the same time, you are here sodomizing, handcuffing, uh, peeing on people. They even said in the in the uh, report that. The, the officer dry humped this guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, what kind of crazy white supremacist stuff is that? All like you got to do handcuffed, and then you turn around and and and, and dry hump them. I mean, <laughs> they 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 but. went full they went full Greek Spartans on them. I mean, look, and the crazy For part real? about it is when you're talking about the police, when you're dealing with discussing it in the context of the white supremacist apparatus, she's talking about BLM and whatnot. This is the police have been on a killing spree for the last decade. And Candace Owens was exactly. there for it and cheering the whole time. Meanwhile, on January 6th, now the woman who claims they're against rioting and whatnot, January 6th, they ain't got a word to say about that. They were beating up police, attacking them, killing them and everything else. And they didn't have a word to say about that. So these folks don't give a damn about police. They're not worried about that. Police is just a, a jingle and a slogan that they invoke whenever they see an opportunity to attack black people. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Let me get called from Erico 267. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? It's Jay from Philly. Jay from Philly, what's on your mind? Yeah, uh, great, great broadcast, brother. Um, uh, I had a question for you. Um, and, and tell me if I'm correct. Um, I'm, I'm noticing somewhat of a, a growing fan base uh, for Candace Owens. Um, part of it is due to uh, these people that follow, um, you know, guys like Kanye West um, who like to break up the white supremacists and the Jewish white supremacists and, Anglo white supremacists. I mean, according to me, as far as I'm concerned, they're all white supremacists, right? But she she calls out the Jews. Um, and another thing she does is that she holds these black women, or, or not just black women, but women in general, accountable for some of their actions. And I've been noticing that there is somewhat of a growing fan base, and I think she's just going to pivot, you know, and keep going that route, and possibly try to, you know, attract more black people to her to her no, side. No, that, um, that's not going to work. That no, that's not going to work. As long as she got Zaddy over there, that's not going to work. Her anti-black tendencies, Zaddy, you add all that together. It's, no, it, it, that, it doesn't add up to that. So she can reference it every once in a while, but she's got to talk to white dudes. She got to talk to that dude, Destiny. And she, she's not talking to anybody with any credentials on our side of the fence. So she's really just talking to the same small echo chamber, and they don't want any women speaking for them. So she can reference it and whatnot, she, if she thinks she's going to take pearly things place and whatnot, and, uh, that's going to be a hard hill to climb. So, no, she, th there are no <laughs> black women who are looking to emulate Candace Owens' life. That's the problem. Black women right. are not sitting around yeah, wishing they could become Candace Owens any more than black men are sitting around wishing they become fresh and fit. So, thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Let me get a call from area code 651. You're on live with the Black Channel. Yeah. What's your name? Where are you calling from? 
This is a Bill call out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. All right, Bill out of Minneapolis, what's on your mind? Yes, sir. Uh, I just want to say a great broadcast tonight, and everything you said about Cannon Stones was really, you hit it on the head. Pretty much this woman has been pretty much a drifter all this time throughout her entire pathetic life. And the thing that really, the one thing that really, you know, insults my intelligence when it comes, when it comes to her is that you had the audacity to sue, you know, for racial discrimination back when you were a teenager and you had the NCAACP backing you up. Then all of a sudden, years later, you turn around, decided to go right wing, and then all of a sudden, you got all this money coming into you. Literally coming in by the by the millions, and then they were basically putting you on the poster saying, "Hey, that's our uh, little white little black puppet for white supremacy." And now basically she speaks out of turn, and then basically they cut her off of the bag. As we as many people have said many times, white supremacy has no retirement fund. And you know what really you know irks me here is that she's trying to you know leech into the black side do, do, doing interviews with the Breakfast Club. Like, listen. You're not going to get any black support. Like, li- literally, she's really destroyed everything about her. Everything about her is just literally death. And it's just like you just sitting here disgracing yourself, and then now all of a sudden you want to try to completely contain the entire character about yourself. Everything well, I mean, you up until record. now, it worked. Remember, there's not a retirement plan for Coonan, but there is a cash advance. There's a cash advance, but but there's not a retirement plan. So because there are so there the slots that are available, there's not many people competing for them. So that's why you got competition because okay, those are some seats that are available. The problem is once you cross over there, it's a one way street, and you better hope that absolutely nothing ever goes wrong, because if it does, you're you can't come back over here. So the white supremacists won't take you and we absolutely can't take you. So it, it becomes this real, this real perilous situation and right now. Uh, uh, reading the tea leaves and seeing how that goes. I'm like, okay, so are you all telling me that white society is going to back Candace over those fellows over there at the daily wire? I don't know. Stay tuned sports fans. She might figure it out. Thank you very much for giving us a call. She might figure it out, but boy, that's a hell of a devil's dilemma, isn't it? The bed winch or the bigots? Which one do you back? Call from Erico 203. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Call from Erico 203. Last try. You're on live. Oh, this is uh, this is John calling from Columbus, Georgia. Okay, John uh, from Columbus, Georgia. That, what's on your mind? I mean, yeah, Candace. Uh, she. I mean, I've been saying pretty much the same thing. She wasn't gonna have anywhere to go once it all fell down. And normally, people like that. That's that. That's their fate. They they go into this with with this attitude that okay, as long as I have these people on my side, it don't matter. As long as I get this money, it don't matter. And secondly, I want to ask, what is it? What is in anime that that leads people to not date within their own culture? Because I know a few people who are like that. There's something in there where it's like, okay, I'm starting to see a consistency. And when you call things before they happen, you you kind of get a pattern here. I don't know what's in that to, to make people do to 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 disgrace their own race like that. You talking, talking about from You talking about from anime? I anime. I swear okay. God, my brother. Well, okay, okay, he, brother. Well, he, okay, well, but where anime is concerned, culture is the most important export from a nation or a people. Your culture. So before anime, there was already an interest in Japanese culture because of the Shogun and the ninjas as children. How many of us didn't didn't have that as something that we thought was cool and fun? So that was something that caught right. on. So they anime, you know, is has been a major vehicle for exporting Japanese culture. 
The reason why this is important is because what happens is that when people gain an affinity for your culture, they also want to imprint it on themselves. We see this with animal totems. We see this with weather yeah. and elementals. So Japanese culture, anime is, a, is, is easily transportable. It's a cartoon. You encounter as children. You can interpret it however you wish to, even though you don't have any idea whatsoever what's the motive is of the people behind it, although what I show you is not very great. So it leaves itself really open to interpretation. It seems otherwise harmless, and it allows you to engage in a fantasy world that's outside of your own without you having to make a permanent commitment to it. So there, uh, there's a whole lot of pull to it in that regard. But in the process, what tends to happen to some disaffected people is they become nerds who start identifying with what they see and where it came from. Now that's where the change happens. As Brother Neely Fuller will put it, you become confused. So you're not watching anime. You're telling yourself, I'm an honorary Japanese person. And that's where the change happens. You become this big, you know, Dragon Ball Z fan and Pokemon fan. And then now you've bled over. You've gotten so deep into it that you've lost yourself. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. Let me get caller from Code 301. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello. This is Sherry from Maryland. Okay, Sherry from where at in Maryland? Uh, Highsville, Maryland. All right, Sherry from Highsville, Maryland. What's on your mind? I'm calling to say, you know, Candace got what she deserved. Uh, let's just give her the Roland Martin treatment because when you look at Roland, he is scrambling every day. But the only thing I'm a little bit concerned about is that some of the things she says, I think from what I can, you know, from the people that I, I <clears throat> talk to, oh, you know, she makes sense here. And then she goes left. So I'm hoping that because we're such forgiving people that, you know, like she went on a breakfast club, that we can get swayed into she's learned her lesson. She has not. She's a traitor. Um, I've gone to school with Haitians. I, my best friend is Haitian. And they got issues. They've got the, some serious, uh, complex issues, uh, you know, with white people. And, and <laughs> they're not our kind. They're, they really aren't. I mean, they're, they're black. But they're not our kind. And I think that's something else a foundational black people get um, confused about. Just because they're our color, that doesn't mean they're our, they're our kind. Their, their blues aren't like ours. Her parents were not from here. So, therefore, she doesn't have the experience that we do. And we always kind of blindly give people the benefit of the doubt that they're black and they know. And another thing that everyone keeps talking about, and that is her uh, issue that she went through through high school, she skirts around it and she skirts through it. I want them to hammer her over the head with it. She went and she begged NAACP and she had the nerve then to skirt around it and say, oh, yeah, I was left, I was homeschooled after that, and that they ended up making um, money off of me and of, of campaigning or, you know. Well, I mean, well, that, that's PR. her distortion of the events because, of course, she's yeah. got to make it seem, it's, it's like, it's the inverse of the white women who dated black men. She's got to go to white society and convince them that she's not some black radical. So she's got to throw the NAACP under the bus and claim and, and go all in yeah. because she's got to make this yeah. farce work. She's got to cover her tracks. So she, she, she yeah. can't leave anything uncovered because, yeah, on paper, her paperwork don't really line up when you think about it. On the alt-right side, mm -hmm. her paperwork actually doesn't line up, but they've got her in so far now. If she's telling herself that she's going to pull a slick one and start talking about, oh, let's talk about values and issues, baby, you're never going to become our spokesperson. Your ship has sailed and sunk. There ain't no coming back. So she can sit there and dream about it, but it's not something that can actually happen. Thank you very much for giving us a call. Let me get caller from Erico 301. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Um, Nicole calling from Prince George's County. All right, Nicole from Prince George's County. Where at in Prince George's County exactly, Nicole? Landover. All right, Nicole from Landover. What's on your mind? So, yeah, I was just going to say, Candace Owens really got in, got into her um, bedwinch handbag. Really, it seems like she was just 
piping up just had so much vitriol towards black people during the George Floyd and the BLM, the height of that. And it seems like she just, in white people's eyes, like they uplifted her even more so during that time. And then from that point on, it seems like she would fly a little close to the sun every now and again, and, you know, nothing would happen or whatever. Now, here we are. And I'd always said it's only a matter of time. She has so much vitriol and so much hatred for black people that it's just, it's palpable. And I'm so glad that she's gotten her wake up call. I mean, well, you make a very good point in that regard because they allowed her, she was allowed to attack us with impunity for so long with the most vile, disgusting, anti-black racism. And eventually what they found out is bedwinches eventually tell themselves that they're better than Massa is and that she can run this thing better than you can. Now there, that's the real issue with white supremacy. White supremacy is a Darwinist asylum is what it is. It's an insane asylum for Darwinism. They're constantly fighting with each other over who has the superior ideology to lead them to glory. And that's what it becomes. Well, guess what? Even their slaves and bedwinches tell them, I I, I know how to run this thing better than y'all do. And that's exactly where she is. So she had been, you make a good point. She had been allowed to attack black people for so long that she told herself, I'm special. They love me. They worship the ground I walk on and there won't be a problem if I expand the group of people I'm attacking. So next thing you know, she starts going to Jewish people and she told herself Mm -hmm. that she's going to get the same leeway that she got when she attacked us. And what she found out frighteningly was, oh, she got a brutal takedown. Yeah, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. Not the way it was before. So she, she cut her teeth on attacking us and she told herself this will translate somewhere else. And it didn't. The moment she tried it here, we saw it, it, she didn't make it a year. That was it. They, they had the knives out for her from the very beginning. And the reason why they have to do this in such a brutal, straightforward way is you got to make an example of her. You have to make an example out of her so that whoever they bring in as their next token Negro understands what the rules are. And understands, by the way, don't ever tell yourself that you're so special, you're so great, you're so sexy. Don't let all that applause go to your damn head. We're the ones who run this, and whenever we want to cut you off, we can. So don't forget what your damn role is. Your role is to attack your people, not ours. Your role is to be negative toward your people, not ours. And don't think you're going to intellectualize it. You're going to intellectualize your ass right out this door. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Let me get a call from Erico757. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Tanya from Virginia Beach. Tanya from Virginia Beach. What's on your mind? Um, in them taking down this tool, I think we have a talking point because I'm going to sit and watch my popcorn. She exposed, like, the Daily Wire's audience. Most crowd is extreme white supremacist, and they're against the Uish. So they took her down for Uish talking points. So we have a great talking point while she goes down in flames to say, wait wait a minute, how are you against her? So I'm like you, it's a house of cards, and I think it's going to be, I, I'm here for the house of cards falling down. It's a circular firing squad. That's what it's devolved into. It's a circular firing squad. Everybody, duck. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. Let me get a call from Erico 804. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Ben, Richmond, Virginia. Ben in Richmond, what's on your mind? Well, it's hilarious how they uh, reminded her of the pecking order in that little interview. Uh, you know, it it, it was, uh, they spoke to her as if she was just a, 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 a freshman in their little college. That, Hey, Candace, you're, you're smarter than this. You know that we can attack you. It doesn't mean that you can attack us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just, he, he, literally, he literally said that just because a Jewish rabbi attacks you, that doesn't mean you have a right to attack him. He literally said that. 
literally. Right. It, it, he just came out and showed her and us the pecking order that, hey, you, you, you can attack the blacks, right? But you can't attack us, even if we attack you. It, and it doesn't even matter if, if uh, you come up with a nice little analogy of how you, you criticize black people for uh, allegedly misusing racism. Uh, you know, that doesn't apply to us at all. Us meaning, you know, the, yeah, I imagine the uh, Jewish gentleman. Uh, you, you know, however we want to use anti-Semitism is of no consequence to you at all. And you, you can't criticize it at all. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just, uh, on, on, it, I mean, the crazy part here is on the one hand, they're going to say there is no conspiracy on their side. And then on the other hand, watch all of them rose at the same time and kicked her out the place. It's like, dude, if you're right. try, if you're trying to convince people that there's not a conspiracy, this is not the way to do it. Right, but I, you know, I'm just I'm just amazed how uh, he just spelled it out for her. Or I think that was her broadcast. Spelled it out all for her. Spelled it all out for us. And uh, you know, uh, I guess he, you know, I guess he doesn't. I imagine he. I guess you believe you were saying that he was making a mistake. He's just, uh, I think he was just uh, tired of hiding. I, I feel as though he was just expressing himself. Well, in, in no, the most honest way. And he certainly was. You're correct. He was expressing himself. Here's the problem. The problem is when you've grown so accustomed to being abusive that you am being allowed to do it, that you grow tone deaf to the fact that you're in a room with other people who can hear you. It's one thing when you're saying yeah. all this garbage in your head. Well, just if we Jewish rabbis attack you, then it's not right for you to attack us. Okay, dude, that sound, that plays in your head. That plays between your ears. Sure. That goes over great, and you get a standing ovation between your ears. You say that in the real world, and you sound at best wacky and crazy. At worst, you sound like a Zionist supremacist. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Fella, I mean, the comment section says it all. At best, you sound wacky and weird and really abusive. At worst, you sound like a Jewish supremacist when you say, I can attack other people and they don't attack me. Dude, that's not the slogan to use. Find another slogan. That's not the one. Well, when, when we abuse you, we need understanding. With you. But if you respond to it, then, hey, what do you think you're doing there? Fella, wake the hell up. All he did, he did the amazing and the impossible. He made Candace Owens look better. As if such a thing could be believed. Call from Erico 443. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, this is Immigrant B1 in Augusta, Georgia. Immigrant B1 in Augusta, Georgia, what's on your mind? So uh, my question is, I know that there, there have been several uh, wake-up calls like this one, and there's definitely going to be more. But I just wanted to find out, do you think that it's ever going to be like something so embarrassing to happen to black people like Candace that would dissuade them from trying to uh, be like her? Or do you think that, this is something that we as black people are just going to have to deal with till the end of time. No, I mean, look, brother, you always have the weak. You always have the sellouts. You always have the cowards. You always have the individuals of no character, no scruples, no dignity, no integrity. You're always going to have that. Candace goes down, brother. The reason why they're so confident over there is because they know if Candace goes down, there's 10 more to take her place. 10 more chomping at the bit. They're, all, they're already in competition to get that slot. So all they'll do is just say, okay, make sure you don't talk about Jews, don't talk about white folk. Okay, I'm ready to go. The problem with black people is, so that that's just the way it is. That's the numerics. And because they keep opening the doors, they're bringing over a whole bunch of other folk just like her. So she is the result of the immigration policy of the last half a century. It's not accidental. So you got a whole bunch of others. I mean, a whole battalion of them. So no, this is never going to run out. It's never going to be exhausted. What we have to do is make sure that we are codified strong enough so that the, their presence doesn't have a negative impact on us. That's the thing we have to do. We have to not worry about them out there bedwinching and bedbucking. 
Our job is to be strong enough that nothing they do affects us negatively. I'll let you have the last word. Well, once again, I just want to appreciate your uh, your insight and your analysis. B1. B1, brother, thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. Yeah, I mean, look, they got a steady supply of bed winches and coons and bucks. They got a steady, steady supply, man. You're not going to get around that. You're not going to get around that. They got plenty of them. And that's the way it's always been. This is a system. This is the way the system runs. They have the ability to create the Candace Owens out of thin air. They're, they can, they'll have another one next week. Not next month. They'll have another one next week. They're going to start grooming. Watch. They'll have another one next week. Mark my words. Daily Wire is going to go find another black female. They're just going to find, they're going to try to find one. It's either going to be a black female or a black male. They're going to go find, try to find another black person here. Some straight laced individual here. And they're going to go try to find them wearing yellow blazers. And they're going to say, okay, see, we're not racist. We replaced Candace with another Negro. They're going to have to do that. They're going to have to do that. They're going to have to replace her with another negress or another Negro. And they'll say, okay, see, everything's great. And they'll be sitting there cheesing like Sage Steel. They'll be sitting there cheesing like Sage Steel. Call them area code 901. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, this is Rose calling from Memphis, Tennessee. Rose from Memphis. What's on your mind? Um, well, so great broadcast. I just have want to pick your brain or what you think about something. But I know, like you said, they're breaking this tool, Daily Wire. She's fired from Daily Wire. But as you know, she's been going on it's like this black media tour, pandering to black folks again. And I feel like they're trying to use her for something else now to try to, you know, maybe even get the black people to start voting Republican, like, woe is me, black people, yeah, I've been targeted, you know, it's all because I said I was, you know, they say I'm anti-Semitic, they know that, you know, black people, for the majority part, we haven't got involved in the the dispute about the war, what's going on over there, we're kind of just staying out of it, so they're trying to get black people to maybe try to pander and get some votes. Yeah, that that, that doesn't, that doesn't work. Like a lot of black people have been kind of feeling bad for. Yeah, that, that won't work, and the reason why is because her credentials in black society have been torched. So I I want people here, don't mistake an internet personality trying to expand their market with somebody trying to recruit politically. Don't mistake those two things. She doesn't have the influence. She doesn't have the pull. She doesn't have the ability for the political thing to work in black society. She's just trying to increase her, 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 her viewer base. She's trying to get those numbers up. And now you see why she was trying to do it and why she's going to work even harder. So she's going to back, I I predict she's going to back off some of that hardcore elbow throwing she was doing at first. She's going to ease up on that a little bit because she needs as much support, long-term support as she can get. So look for her to go a little bit less making enemies. Thank you very much for giving us a call. A little bit less. Don't worry, she's going to swing back to it, but... Look for her to be very conciliatory. Look for Candace Owens to be very conciliatory, especially if she starts to see her viewership numbers drop. She might have 3 million subscribers on YouTube, but if she sees those numbers going down, eh, she might think a little bit differently about that. Call her from Erico 504. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good evening, Jason. This is G from New Orleans. G from New Orleans, what's on your mind? All right. Good evening, brother. Uh, great broadcast. Um, I just want to say the chickens have come home to roost. Uh, Candace Owens has a history, everybody's talked about it, of making the most vile and repugnant statements about black people. And the lesson in all of this that we can learn, especially is that Cooning has no 401k plan. That's what she, uh this woman has done. That's what Candace Owens has represented. Let's not forget 2020 when Ahmaud Arbery was killed out in Georgia by the McMichaels and that Brown and that uh, other gentleman. And I use that term loosely. She did a whole video that you can find on Facebook where she's trying to 
essentially justify in his, his shooting, which is essentially what they did. Well, he wasn't that innocent. He was, you know, not this black man that was hunted down. When we see in the video that not only did they follow this man and struck him with a truck, they met with the district attorney. He called the DA out in that county in Georgia. Yeah, I mean, she she went full bore for it there. You want to talk about a conspiracy? That's not a conspiracy theory. That's a conspiracy. And just like any other time, she was there to defend the murder of black people. She's always been dependable for that. And the white media has never had a negative word to say about that. All of a sudden now, they're coming out with the pitchforks and flaming and whatnot. Get the hell out of here. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Let me get called from area code 215. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, this is Trinessa from Philly. Hi, right, Trinessa from Philadelphia. What's on your mind? Yes. Um, I just wanted to kind of piggyback off of what I just heard, um, especially with the conciliatory part. I don't think she can ever truly be conciliatory to the Black community. Um, one, she just got her Stacy Dash uh, wake up moment, and as we know, Stacy Dash, Amarosa, those folks can never really come back. Um, their 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 activities are over. Um, but like what she did with like um, George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, what she said about Trayvon Martin, what she said about Mike Brown, what she said about Breonna Taylor. She yeah, you you can't him. walk that. You can't uh, over the. She didn't just say some inflammatory things. She said it uh-huh. over the course of years. She was right there beside years. the Richard Spencers and the Ben Shapiro's. Every time something happened to black folk, she was right there to defend it. No, you can't walk that one backwards. You can't say that that was just a temporary aberration or that was a mistake or it was taken out of context. You've been hard body for it. So, no, there is no walking it backwards, not for her. Exactly. So right now what she's trying to do is rebrand herself. And if you look at her, when she put out her little statement, she pointed to her YouTube channel. She has the YouTube channel right now, but that's owned by the Daily Wire. And she has her own personal one that she's pointed to, which has 1.47 million subscribers. But if you go back to that one, it's going to be hard for her to clean up all that nasty stuff that she has within those videos. So it's going to be hard for her to truly rebrand herself. She can go on all these shows. That's great. But you can't take back your words. Those words are there. And the hatred I mean, that's that her has, brand. You know, she talks about her too. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not just her words. That's her brand. So she, brand. even if she wanted to, she would alienate her core white supremacist audience if she did. Exactly. So she's stuck between the devil mm-hmm. and the deep black sea is the problem. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. Somebody in the chat room had said, um, what if she goes on an apology tour? Here's the problem. The people you want to apologize to ain't trying to hear it. Now, the, there is a group who will hear it. Roland Martin. Now, Roland would do it, but you got to bring a bag. Candace can get some, she's going to be able to get a few people with very low integrity to go ahead and go for it with her, but she going to have to bring something. So she's going to have to bring them some real audience numbers or bring them a bag. So if there ain't some dollars in it for them, eh, she's not, they're not really going to be looking for it either. That's the problem. So mark my words. If she did want to do such a thing, she got to have something to offer. She got to have something to offer. And right now, like I say, it's gonna be it's gonna be real shaky to see if that happens. She doesn't have she doesn't have the financial resources to really drop a bag like she needs to. So what you gonna do? Call from Air Code nine two five. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? This is BZ calling out of Oakland. All right, BZ out of Oakland. What's on your mind? Uh, great podcast. Uh, I just want to make a quick point about the rabbi. I know you said you've seen the whole thing. There was a point, several points in there where Candace was railing against BLM. And then the rabbi said, oh, yeah, I didn't support that either. 
he went on a campaign and he said, I support it. All lives matter. And he talked about how he was infuriated when the MLB and NBA and other people just literally start virtue signaling and putting Black Lives Matter on. So he was talking about how he rallied the troops to go on a campaign against Black Lives Matter. And then um, also the, the Democrats and the Rolling Stone, they hate Candace Owens, right? She's a flaming anti-Semite, but they uh, called on her and Coleman Cruz Hughes to speak against reparations, um, knowing that their lineage is not even qualified for them. And then uh, she has been going on this rebranding tour. Uh, and But when she was on The Breakfast Club, you know, the charlatan, the fraud, and the other simps on there, they let her just subtly disrespect black men to their face when she said, you marry your IQ. And kind of like to the point that you were alluding to earlier about the anime, she said her first preference in terms of fetish, uh, uh, and her fantasizing was against Asian men. So, so, so that was her first preference was to go with an Asian guy, and then the black dudes was just an afterthought. And I'll just land with that. Thank you, brother B One. B One, thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. Real quick, want to thank everyone who has contributed to support tonight's program here on PayPal, Venmo, Cash App. Everyone there, thank you all very much for your support. We appreciate that. As always, thank you. Let me get caller from area code 617. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, this is Shell from Boston. Hi, right, Shell from Boston. What's on your mind? Um, one thing I I, um, I saw within the last couple of weeks before this happened was that they have had um, their backstage uh, show where they all get together and they've actually been supporting just Pearly. And they've had her on a couple of times. They've been talking about her lately, and they've been defending her views. Yeah, that's that's real interesting. That that's real interesting it. when she's Nick Fuentes' BFF. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. After everything she said about, about them as well. And they're, they're glossing over that, but the only person that had some type of pushback was, was Candace. And they made excuses for just Pearly. Like I say, I mean, that that, that lets you know what their real motivation is. It it just lets you know that if they had a real problem with it and I'm the guy who broke that open to the world. Okay. But yeah, it's it's not like that's news in that regard. So when she comes in the room, you want to talk about anti-Jewish. You want to talk about that? Yeah. So they're letting you know, I mean, you make a very good point. I mean, look, they may be vetting her for that. They're trying to see if they can redeem her and clean her up. Pretty much they've taken her to the side and said, look, um, yeah, that anti-Jewish thing got to go. And she's more than eager to get away from that. She's more than eager to try to get away from that. And I think they kind of just made a little deal with her that they won't bring up Nick Fuentes if she's not trying to be booed up with him. So the real acid test is going to be if she still claims Nick Fuentes, but you make a very good point. These rabbis and Ben Shapiro, you ain't sitting here going at her and quizzing her about Israel and Gaza with her buddy Nick Fuentes. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't even need Nick Fuentes. That's a red herring. You don't even need Nick Fuentes. What Pearly Thing said herself is enough. What she said about the Holocaust herself is enough. Agreeing with Fuentes, so her own words are enough. So yeah, don't look for them to quiz her about that, about how she feels about Jewish people and then about Israel. Don't don't look for that to happen. Because at this point now, what they're going to try to tell you is, oh, it's been a year since I did what I did. Um, it's going to be a year yeah. since then. So they're going to be like, okay, let's see if we can just, you know, pave that over. And see if anybody brings yep. it, if anybody of any notoriety brings it up. Because in reality, it didn't start with the Daily Wire. What's his name? Uh, Pierce Morgan. That guy has been bringing her on yep. and whatnot. So that this this soft rehab of her is what they've been trying to do the whole time. They've really been trying to soft rehab her. It's ultimately going to fail. And then Jason Whitlock had her on the other day, too. Yeah, but it's, it's ultimately going to fail because, you know, Pearl's an airhead. It's ultimately, it's not going to work. The real thing is she's a snake oil salesman and the people trying to boost her don't understand it yet. Her star was last, was two years ago. 
Her star went and fell last year. You're not going to be able to reignite it. You're not going to be able to get her hot again. You can bring her on. She's not a ratings draw. She doesn't pull the numbers. And anybody who wants to shut her down, all they got to do is say, Nick Fuentes. Sorry, she's a permanently damaged brand. And she is too unskilled, unintelligent, and incapable of being able to raise that. So the more you talk to her, the less you see that she actually knows. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Let me get a call from Airco 201. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good evening, Jason. This is Frank from Jersey City. Frank from Jersey. What's on your mind? How you doing? Um, no, your moderator asked me to call in because I had some comments about Candace Owens when she was on The Breakfast Club. Okay, brother, you're wasting our time. What is it? Well, no, I, she said call in. I just wanted to just say... Uh, no, no, I called in because your moderator said call in. Yes, so sir. They told to say, you to uh, call in. You already know what you said. Let's get to it. I know what I said. You want me to repeat what I said? Yes, okay, sir. Okay, what I said was the fact. What I said was the fact that you can't throw everything out what she said. What she said on the Breakfast Club. I understand she has some horrible comments about black people, and I get that, but. Emotionally, I'm not getting emotionally tied up in what she's saying. Jared Jared Taylor has saying. had some what, intelligent can things finish, to say. Jared Taylor saying, has had some point. intelligent things to say. To Sir, Jared Taylor has had some intelligent things I'm to say up. about architecture and music. Are we going to give him a pass for that? You can go ahead and ban him from the chat room there. She has some good things to say, Jared Taylor. She has some accurate things to say. Jared Taylor has some accurate things to say, too. Do we give him a pass for that? No, as soon as he heard that, Jared Taylor has some good things to say. Oh, man. What do you say? Let me go ahead and slit my own throat. Yeah, there's no way in the hell you can defend that. Candace Owen got some good things to say. Look, just tell the truth. Little fruit booty mama's boy, just tell the truth. You are one of these dried out, desperate, dusty bum dudes who used, used one of these hangers on who's still trying to tell yourself that Candace Owens hit the wall aged out ass is hot. You're one of these dudes, boy, she's a lot easier on the eyes than the usual battle axes they bring on. So just go ahead and say that, dude. Go ahead and say you got a geek crush on that. Just go ahead and say that instead. Don't sit up here with this garbage like she's some prescient individual saying these great and wonderful pronouncements because she's not. Just go ahead and say that part. Just go ahead and say that. I be dreaming about Candace Owens. I be oiling myself up. and Say that instead. Just say that part. Well, Jason, you know, she, I think she kind of hot, dude. I mean, it's just give what she had to say a chance. She has a husband. Well, you know, I mean, long as he don't know, two can play. All right. So look, you got to understand in the internet age, you got a bunch of fellows sitting behind their game boys. And that's the whole thing for them. He don't care what she says about black people. She looks better than the last three slop hogs I was dating. That's all he can think about right there. Boy, she she would be my alt-right conservative crush. She's my real life anime fantasy. So that's the type of individual who backs a Candace Owens. What's the problem there? The problem is y'all don't understand. She say some good things. Negro, she literally would be standing with the police if they shot your ignorant ass down in the middle of the street. Candace Owens would literally be sitting with the police saying, you should have complied. You shouldn't have moved. You shouldn't have come outdoors. She would literally say that immigrant B1. If you want to know what I was talking about, that was what I was talking about. He, he would literally, she would literally be sitting there with the police 
standing over your dead body saying it's your fault. And his dumb ass, the last thing he put on the internet, well, you know, she said some good things on the breakfast club. I don't see why y'all don't understand. I, 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 I eat the meat and throw the bones away. And I eat the meat and throw the bones away is what I do. I don't just take everything. I, I keep the parts I need and I get rid of the rest. I mean, she's sitting there with Officer Darren Wilson handing him a damn Starbucks cappuccino over your dead, ignorant ass. She be saying some, she say some good things, dude. She, she say some good things. Some people are just not fit for survival. Just survival is not for them. It's, they, they, they don't get it. They don't understand. They have no interest in it. They have no appetite for it. Survival is not for him. Call from Erico 501. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Jay from Chicago. Jay from Chicago. What's on your mind? Uh, with uh, Candace uh, Owens, I guess, I mean, right now, if you're not talking about sponsorships, I mean, can she just go back and just start a YouTube channel and get demonetized and, you know, uh, get it from the grassroots? But she, she really doesn't have any grassroots. Uh, I guess I guess her lane is gonna be fresh and fit, you know, just coming on and bashing the uh, the the women that come on that show about you know femininity and yeah, and culture. and that <laughs> one and that one's not going to work. And the reason that that won't work is just like the screwball geeky caller who just got off of here. Nobody wants to be like Candace. That's the problem. There are no okay. 14, 15 year old girls out there who are saying, I wish I could become a professional bed wench and professional white ass kisser. That's not the point. That's not, that's not their feeling. So her advice will automatically fall on deaf ears because the audience doesn't want to have your life. That's why her trying to yeah. switch over to the red pill relationship talk game isn't going to work for her. The females don't want to emulate her life. And truth be told, the men don't want her either because you can pretty much tell this is the kind of chick who's going to tell you what kind of household is going to be. So if you're not a cuck, she's not, she's not a submissive woman by any stretch of the imagination. So she'll talk about the problems of Western culture, but the, she doesn't have a feminine submissive bone in her body. So it, she, she's going to make more appearances in more places which means that she she already mm -hmm. knew that Daily Wire was inching her out the door. So she's already let that be known. So she's trying it somewhere else because she thinks it's hot. But the problem is she's a flawed spokesperson. She's flawed. It isn't going to work. Other females can shut her down. And at the end of the day, people don't listen to you if they don't want your life. Her credentials are being a black hating conservative. Those are her credentials. Being a token black. And nobody wants to sign up to have the life of a token black. I'll let you have the last word. Mm -hmm. I guess it's the team up with Megan Kelly or, uh, nope. I guess it makes some appearances on Jason Whitlock's show, which he's trash too. <laughs> that nigga had, that nigga had what ESPN and still can't get no views. So I just let that, let that be what it is. No, she, she can't roll with Megan Kelly because oh, okay. Megan, Megan <laughs> Kelly is racist. But also, Megan is not going to have competition. Oh. Over there on okay. their little corner of things, Megan Kelly and Tucker Carlson breaking bread. But that's because they're both former <laughs> Fox alumni who both got fired. So they have a kinship in that regard. They don't want the Candace Owenses. Now, Tucker will talk to Kansas, to Candace, but only because she got more YouTube followers than he does. And he's still trying to get his numbers up, you know, in that higher range there. Last I looked, he was near a million. I don't think he's over a million yet, but last I looked, he was near it. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to get those numbers up is what he's trying to do. And he, you know, he's, he just did an interview with uh, uh, Chris Cuomo. He just did mm -hmm. an interview with Chris Cuomo. So, okay, Tucker's at 1.8 on YouTube. So that certain, I guess the Putin interview really helped him. Uh, he's, he's trying to get those numbers up 
And he's, in this case here, talking to Candace, gives him access to her audience, who are people who may have doubted his conservative credentials or whatever, with Trump and whatever. So talking to the hard alt-right is always a good thing for him to do in that regard. So for Tucker, that works a little bit better. For Megan, Megan ain't making no lane for Candace. Megan is the, mm. even though she is the woefully aged out, blonde, blue-eyed bombshell, She's trying to hold on to that. She doesn't want a younger female competitor sitting next to her. Dude, that ain't gonna work. I mean, can you imagine? Candace is younger, more articulate, more insightful, and more tuned in to the internet zeitgeist. Megan Kelly don't want to have a side-by-side picture of the two of them talking. She doesn't want to have a <laughs> head-to-head comparison of those two. Megan Kelly is what, 50-something years, 55 years old? She doesn't want that to be the yeah. case. She doesn't want that to be the case, man. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. So mm. no, dude, this, in theory, you, you would hope they would play well together, but truth be told, man, right. it, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Megan is 53 years old. Candace is 34. There's a 20 year difference between them. 34 versus 53. You already know that this is a lost cause before you get up there. That side by side gonna be a beast. Candace is actually gonna get, get up there and get some decent hair for a change instead of whatever in the hell this football helmet is she was wearing with the rabbi. She's gonna get her hair done for a damn change and get some fly clothes on. She's gonna be like, oh, I welcome this side by side shot. Half your audience leaving with me on sex appeal alone. So it's, it's, in, it's in Megyn Kelly's best interest not to do that. It's, it's in her best interest to just send Candace a congrat, uh, to send Candace a conciliatory email. Good luck on your future endeavors and leave that alone. Don't bring that girl up on the screen the same time as you. Don't do it. <laughs> B1, I'm out. B1, brother, thank you for giving us a call tonight. Yeah, in theory, it sounds good. Don't do that. That side by side going to be vicious. Don't do it. Baby, you 53. Next to Candace Owens, you're going to look every inch of it. Just, I suggest you go find somebody your age. Get that Maria Bartiromo woman up there. Y'all two side by side, that's good. Susan's gone wild. That, that's good right there. Call from Erico 832. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? Yo, Jay out of Houston, Texas. What's going on, Jason? Jay out of Houston, what's on your mind? Yeah, I mean, my only argument with you would be that uh, I think she still has a lane, man. I mean, with the conservative group that she has, with the fresh and fit, fit crowd, and the people that she can pay out, I mean, she still has a lane, man. I mean, she could probably fit into the, like you said before, if she has the money, she can get the Roland Martin crowd. She can get the fresh and fit crowd. She can get that uh, that fat Jason Whitlock crowd. She can get um, anybody that is willing to sell themselves out to their audience. They can get the crowd for her. you know. You, you get what I'm saying. He, here's the issue I have with that rationale. She's already mm-hmm. got them. It isn't like Fresh and Fit debuted Candace Owens to their audience. The audience already knows who she is. So mm-hmm. you you pick up audience members from folks who don't really know you or are not familiar with you. Jason Whitlock's audience. I mean, he's a professional coon. They already know his audience. Already knows Back. who she is. These other folks, their audiences already know who she is. So it, it's not like she's being debuted to people who don't know her. So that's why I would be skeptical to think that that's gonna, that, that particular strategy is going to work. You're preaching to people who already know you and are already converted. You're not talking to people who don't know you and aren't converted. You're talking to folks who already know you. So she would have to come over on our side or something, and that's not going to work. And she can show up on the Breakfast Club, but she's not peeling off any any eyeballs there, except for the mama's boys, manga niggas, like the clown who got off the phone <laughs> earlier. But that guy there is like, nobody wants to be around him either. So unless you're just the real rejects, you know, the toy, the uh, from the land of misfit toys, you know, except for that group, I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening. Now, okay. what she will do, okay. what she is doing is gaining synergy. Now, that can mm-hmm. occur, but remember, that's not to grow her audience. That's simply to solidify her base. 
So that is something mm-hmm. important for her to do. You know, she's getting her name out there more, showing up in more places. What she's trying to show is that she's willing to talk to other people outside of strictly political spheres. That's what she's trying to do. Okay, that's smart, but that will only have a limited appeal. Let's talk about the money. The majority of her money was coming from Daily Wire. Let's be very clear about that. That was the deal that she struck. The majority of her money was coming from them. Her YouTube monetization is going to be iffy at best. You've got Rolling Stone and CNN calling you an anti-Semite, damn it. How long, you, even if she is monetizing right now, and I don't know if she is or isn't, I don't know if she can or can't, but if she is, with you got all these mainstream outlets calling you anti-Semitic, oh, there goes your monetization. There goes that. You got this rabbi out here with a grudge against you. Okay, that there goes that. So I don't think she can count on YouTube in that regard. She has her website. Okay, great. She will, it, So she's obviously trying to set up to go the Steven Crowder route because Crowder has a pretty rabid following that supports him very into the tens of millions of dollars. Okay, fine. I, don't, I think she's a little too stiff to be able to pull that one off. And she's streaking towards 40 like a bug on a windshield on Interstate 95. So I'm just wondering how long she can trade on sex appeal. I, I, I think she's just really trying to shore her base up as much as she can. And yes, the only okay. other option would be for her to try to pivot into the relationship space. And that's a dud. So if she can't get these folks who, who the, she thought was going to back her when she took this Jewish turn, if she can't get them to hold strong, it gets bad from here. I mean, I, I agree with you on a lot of that, but uh, I have some some disagreements. I don't know if you have time for that, but uh, I agree with you on the most part of that, though, for sure. What did you disagree with? Okay, so I disagree with uh, the the whole turn. I mean, she the sex appeal uh, sex appeal turn for 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 example. Um, she's in her thirties, right? I mean, you have a lot of these incels. You have a lot of these people who are uh, passport bros, whatever you know, like. Me, for example, I'll, I'll squeeze on those, you know, tits and shit, you know, you know, and make it happen. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't mind some gutter sex for, you know, with her once. But besides that, I mean, she 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 has an <laughs> appeal to a conservative conservative audience, and if she's able to sell herself out to the Roland Martin crowd, she can sell herself out to, uh, I guess, some of these fake people out here who's trying to beep. Uh, pro black or whatever these fake people, not you know, not everybody, but these fake people who are willing to sell themselves out in art in order to make some money. She she has a she has a lane, dude. You have to you have to admit, Jason Black, that she has a lane that she can walk right through. Yeah, I mean, right to, of money. yeah, to some of y'all niggas sitting on your lazy boys in your thong underwear rubbing yourselves. Yeah, she got a big lane, but for, for the rest of us, no, not what? so. We've seen better broads who got better personalities. So, I mean, to, fellas, to fellas who females and they're not really used to females, okay. she's impressive. To those of us who are used to females, she is mid at best. So it, it really ain't that thing, dude. She she's really not that she really ain't that fine. I mean, she's a she is a Shreveport six. So it's it's really not that great. She looks real serious. She looks real right. stern. So it, it it's really not there in that regard. Now there's a certain geek audience that just loves that and but they already do. The real thing is I don't think it stretches beyond that. And the and she is every let's just talk about the relationship space. She is every 21st century female that you don't want to be around she wants to talk about her degrees she wants to flaunt how smart she thinks she is even when she's not so the, the only thing you guys keep geeking about is boy i'd love to lay up with that and what i'm saying is and that's all she's got to trade on none of you are talking about her personality anything profound she said none of you are talking about her wisdom you're not quoting her no, in right any way that. all of y'all are talking about i lay up with that and, um, and that's a damning commentary and, and you missed one thing i said i'll lay up with that gutter six one night in bed in a hotel okay but you won't go to her youtube no bras but you won't huh? go but you won't go to her youtube or her website and that's what she needs i'll go to her only fans okay she gotta start one first sir <laughs> Come on, Jason. Hey, look, I'm out of H-Town, man. She is fine enough for one night. 
I don't care how many haters you got in the audience. I don't care if you're a hater. Houston, Look, she has we a, she have has a problem. Hey, All right, Houston, Houston, y'all got to own this. Hey. <laughs> Houston, y'all got to own this right here, boys. Houston, okay. Bruh. First Sheila Jackson Lee, hey, now bro. this. So, Houston. No, no Sheila Jackson Lee. Houston, hey, my, my condolences, note, though, Houston. On a serious note, uh, can I be a, a serious note, though? She has a lane, and if she plays her cards right, she could be alone for, she could be here for another decade or two. I mean, besides the uh, gutter sets out, engage with her for a second or two, she has a lane where she can get a monetary audience, and you know what I mean? That can last for another two decades, am I right? I don't know if she can support it with a primarily male audience in that regard. You've already got Megan Kelly. If anybody could do it, okay. Kansas, if anybody could do it, Candace could. I just think it's going to be a challenging thing. And I don't think, she, I don't think she's going to be the power in five years that she was for the previous five years. I don't think. That's okay. One happen. more thing, Jason. One more thing, Jason. Can I say one more thing? Thank you very much for giving us a call. Houston. Boy, what in the hell's the matter with you? Yeah, man, I mean, I, I would have some good sex with it here. I'd roll around here. Yeah, you know, the hotel room. Houston, you... Houston, okay. Houston got to hold this L. Jason, you don't understand. I, I sure would. All right, Houston. Trying to help you out. Call from area code 917. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Dana from New York. Dana from which borough in New York? Manhattan. All right, Dana from Manhattan. What's on your mind? Yeah, um, to the people that are wondering, like, why she became self-hating, it's not so much that. <clears throat> it's when these people put their kids in these all-white schools which Candace went to, they face many microaggressions. And when you go there young, this is what tends to happen to many of them. So with her, I don't think that she's actually selling out. I think that she really just has a mental issue where she really does just hate herself and she sees herself a different way. She didn't do no. this like, oh, I'm going to do this. Too no, she really we know, we know that's that not the case. Happy. We know that's not the case because she filed a whole lawsuit before she ever got on. Before she became known, she filed a whole lawsuit about racial discrimination. So she's she's not ignorant. When she talked to the rabbi, she started trying to defend her black credentials. So she, she's not ignorant about it. No, it's, it's not that. No, I'm not saying that she's ignorant about it. What I'm saying is that the reason why she speaks like this and acts like this is because of that situation. Even and when she filed the lawsuit years ago, I did an essay on that years ago. It was the mayor's son that was her, you know, that she had this ordeal with. I don't even think that she came for the NAACP. I think they reached out to her because of the situation. I mean, maybe she they, maybe they it. did, maybe they did, but she certainly pushed the effort after that. So, and she did get the money for it. I had the issue with her when she said that there was no racism when um, it, racism didn't come about until Obama was president. That's what made me do the essay on her. But what I'm saying is when you send your kids to these all-white schools that are only black kid in the school, they tend to come out a little twisted because they have these microaggressions. They're trying to, like, I guess, fit in with the white kids, and they just get lost to who they are. A lot of times they don't have parents that are – Okay, that. well, thank you really? very okay, thank you very much cuz there's the real issue. We send our black children into all kinds of majority white situations. If your parents are on code and in touch with the kids, those situations don't sit there and transform them. If you got a home environment that's backing, if the home environment is what puts you at that school in the first place. And if you go backing exactly. it, that that's what happens mm -hmm. there. So, I would actually start at the home instead because if the parents were not lockstep with it, there'd be more conflict out of her to begin with. The parents were in line with it. The school, that environment certainly doesn't help, but the parents are in line with it. 
I 100% agree with that. I think a lot of times when parents do choose to send their kids to an all-white school, something's wrong with the parent in the first place because you're sending your child someplace they're going to be all day where you can't even, you don't even know what's happening to them. You don't know if they're, what these teachers are saying, what the other students are saying. Once again, it's an error. There's an error there. No, you do know what the teachers are saying. That's the thing. You, You do know. That's the whole reason for sending them there. They know what the teachers are saying. But see, that's what I'm saying. Why would a like normal, like a person, a black person that understands, why would they even send their child to that type of school? Because they, they because quote, I want my kids to excel in this. She's turned out exactly the way her parents wanted. Take a look at it from their perspective. Take a look at what she's doing. She's internationally known. Even if she's not famous, she's infamous. You know, so from their perspective, oh, she's married and got kids and she's, she's quote, very successful. So as far as a coon lineage is concerned, mission accomplished. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Take it from their perspective. From their perspective, mission accomplished. Everything's all good. Thumbs up. Everything's going according to plan. Call from Air Code 864. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Is this sleep apnea nigga really sitting on his phone? He sure is. If there's somebody in the 864 area code who knows some bookman built nigga and then called me up and fell asleep on the damn phone, go slap him across the back of the head and wake his ass up. I mean, this nigga is out like a light. Oh, he got a little simp ass snore too. <laughs> oh, can you imagine being with this in bed, ladies? Oh, I'm going there, nigga. Can you imagine this? How you gonna tell me you got an all true man and he's snoring like a hoe? I bet you he weigh about 400 pounds too. I bet you, I bet you a great big ass nigga with a little old snore to him. This big tiny, built looking like Bob Sapp. In bed like Bob Sapp, the sheet ain't even big enough to cover his feet. It's a, the big old sheet, but he's so big it can't cover his feet. It just, it just covers him from about the middle of his chest down to halfway through his, down his knees. It's just, this is the life he living. He's laying on his back. He don't even remember what he was watching on TV when it happened. It just <laughs> There's some woman out there. This your dude. I ain't get him off the damn phone. This is all right. Me. <laughs> Me. Call Miracle 321. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Jason. This is uh, Air Talk from Orlando, Florida. Um, great broadcast. Uh, for the lady earlier, it's, yeah, exactly what you said. As you know, I'm from Florida, so I'm used to these Caribbeans and other people from other backgrounds. Their parents teach this to them. We all heard about, oh, don't, uh, don't, don't, don't associate with black Americans. What they don't tell you is... Um, not only that, but they, they, they worship white people. So is that guy, she, she can't just the right, right way. You know what I'm saying? They they do this. Like my 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 daughter's half Haitian. I have to instill all this stuff into her. Her mom not doing that. I have to do it. You know? And they put their kids in white school. That's why you always see, when you ever see a black kid get messed up, you're like, how that happened? They're usually coming from a Caribbean or an African background. But um, back to Candace, 
I think what she kind of banked on, because she's around these white supremacists, and I know you, I listen to Tariq, and you see how they have these white supremacists come on her, on his Twitter thing or whatever, and they say, oh, it's really the Jews or whatever. I think she really got caught up in that. I think they hyped her up that is, you know, it's really the, the J people, and she thinks she can she can talk that trash. And they're not going to, like you said, they're not going to step with her. Yeah, I mean, look, I I think there were two things that emboldened her. Number one, all those years of talking trash about us. Number two, I guess she told herself that hanging with Kanye and that Kanye has really been able to tread water very well in the last six months. He's been treading water very well. Okay, but that's the result of a 20-year career. So he's got a fan base that doesn't really care about some of the wacky stuff he says and does. They don't really care about that. Candace doesn't have that. So if she's sitting there looking at Kanye and thinking that that's that's some type of equivalence to what her life is or what her status is, that would be a huge error on her part to make. So I think that those two things together, she started to tell us she got some star power, she's heading towards 40, and I think that she really wants to be... Candace Owens wants to be a celebrity. Well, she's, I wanted to let you all know. This yeah. is the thing I want to tell you all about before. Candace wants to move a little different now because Candace wants to be a celebrity. She's heard all these people talking about, oh, you cute and this, that, and the other. She wants to get that shine. The, 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 the zaddy she with, eh, it ain't really hitting like it was. His attention isn't really satisfying her. She wants to get some of that raw sexual energy and attention. And so she's branching off into places where she thinks it's safe to compete for that. You're standing next to Kanye West. So now you got the, all these people, lights, cameras and whatnot. So you're getting a level of shine from an avenue and avenue uh, direction that you did, weren't previously getting it from. That's what I think caught her. I think she's looking at 34 years old and she really wants to have a run as being the popular girl just on looks and sex appeals. She really wants to have her run. She doesn't want to, okay, you appreciate me for my brains and stuff. Okay, I need you to appreciate me as a woman. I'm trying to get that that little medal. And I think that's what she's going for now. And, and she's going all out for it. But she made a detour. And a detour because of the folks she was hanging out with. And she got emboldened because of her proximity to them. And she was totally oblivious to who she worked for. Oh, yeah. No, you, you, you're absolutely correct. You know, uh, uh, one last thing. I, I meant to say this, but I forgot uh, about the whole situation, how people are taught from the sport when they come here. And I had one that come from the same place Candace people came, told me when I'm trying to school him on white supremacy. He's like, you black people are jealous of white people. They really tell them this when they're growing up. They think everything we say is that we're jealous of white people. This is real. We have to understand how these other groups think. And 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 as you listen to Candace, you can tell that that's how her parents taught her. Now she's out here with the mistaken notion that she's an honorary white person, and they just showed her brutally. No, you're not. Do you all think that this Jewish rabbi would have talked that way to Megyn Kelly? Do you all think that he would have talked that way to Megyn Kelly? Do you think that he would have talked that way to one of the Fox News hosts? Do you think he would have, the white women, do you think he would have talked that way to them? Call from Erico 251. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? How you doing, Jason? It's uh, Kevin from Mobile. All right, Kevin from Mobile, what's on your mind? Yeah, this is what I was thinking. Now, you grew up, you was a wrestling fan. Do you, do you think Candace could just be going through a, a face turn, you know, how like the uh, big boss man, he went from bad to good. You don't think she could be going through one of those transformations? No, and the reason why is because she doesn't know how. Number wow. one, she doesn't know how. Okay. Because she doesn't know how to talk to black people. She doesn't know how to talk to us, so she doesn't have a means to do it, so that's not going to work. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. There was something I just remembered. 
there was something I just remembered. Hey, last year, after my video about pearly things came out and lit the world on fire, weren't there a bunch of people, weren't some of her former associates on her little show over there in London, What, what weren't they saying that pearly things had the same manager as Candace Owens? Damn! If I remember correctly, when they were putting out that video saying she was in the room with this dude over there when they had these girls, weren't they saying that she had the same manager or same representative or whatever as Candace Owens did? Wasn't that what they were saying back then? What? Well, right. interesting. Yeah, I, I, I just now remembered that. That by the way, yeah, they were saying that Pearl had the same manager or representative as Candace, Candace Owens back then, so they were already opening up that lane. And what I'm saying is, I wonder if Candace realized that, yeah, let's bring in Pearl, who is younger than you are, and she's actually white, not pretend white, not cosplay white. She's the real white white. And you gonna be used to groom her. And you're gonna open up that channel on YouTube. And then we gonna move you out and move her in. And you just gonna be left on the well, sidelines. So yeah, I just now remembered that. Damn, almost three hours into the program. Yeah, I just now remembered that. That yeah, that, but, that's but what I, they were saying. On. But, but Pearl, she don't have the talent that Candace has, so it ain't gonna work. And Pearl is very disingenuous when yeah, she talks. But so. brother, brother, here's the issue, and I get this, and I'm the first one to tell you that Pearl ain't it ain't never gonna happen for you, Pearl. But by the same token, if we say eh, capability, and eh, then there's Laura, uh, what's her name? Um, Laura, Tommy Lauren, another one who has right. been. Now let's be clear, she's been mid. Let's be very, very clear about that but she ain't the brightest bulb either. Then again, she didn't have to be. So this also underscores, hey, by the way, Candace, you have to be four times as smart, twice as good looking and four times as smart as your white female counterparts. And they sitting up here giving them a lane. You had to earn yours. Let's be very, very clear. As black people, every single one of us got to earn it, including the coons. Every single black person has to earn everything they get, including the coons. They got to earn theirs too. So she's had to fight and scrap and scrape for it. And they sitting up here, yo, 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 yo man, Candace is sitting up here making a lane for the girl they're going to replace you with. So I think it worked out for them. Candace is gone. They, they hurt her image. So she doesn't get to take the benefits of being with Daily Wire with her. They slide Pearl up in there. They'll get some token Negro to, to uh, be symbolically replacing Candace. But, and it's not going to be what they're going to do. What they're going to find out with Pearl is that they overpaid. Now, that's going to be the reality for them. They're letting her YouTube numbers from two years ago fool them into believing that that's what she still is. So what she's going to do is try to make a deal, get a bag, and later they're going to realize she's not coachable, she's not upgradable, she's not smart enough to get good on this. What you see right now is the best she's ever going to be, and you overpaid. You overpaid. It's going to be Ryan Leaf all over again. You overpaid. She can't deliver what you all actually want her to deliver. She can't do it. I'll let you have the last word. Well, I will say this uh, two things. Well, I'll talk about two. real quick. I, I think Pearl, I mean, no, I think that Candace, she was actually the Shannon Sharp over there at the Daily Wire. So they're not going to be able to replace her. Uh, number two, I want to see her and Dr. Umar has his head to head showdown. I want to hear that. Uh, number three, now, we know Candace, she's getting old, and she, she really a slut. She married a white man because he had a lot of money. But you got to keep it 100, Jason Black. Tell me you wouldn't smash the health off GP. No. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, man, uh, B-Boy. Ah! Let me get this nigga out of here. Let me tell y'all, no joke. Stuff like that, that's what emboldens her. If she feels like men don't really mean it when they criticize her, then she's like, oh, you just jealous you can't get with this. And just understand that emboldens her too, by the way. That's emboldening her. 
Candace Owens is not some ravishing beauty. She she looks like, you know, this uh, awkward sophomore in college. It's it's not anything great there. What you doing is looking around at the aged out little old ladies at the conservative convention. Okay, compared to them, she's a dime. But you ain't got no choices. So, fellas, come on now. Come on. In the chat room, JC, if you post that again, I'm going to have you kicked out of here. You keep posting the same stupid thing. What do you got, Tourette's? Nobody cares what her husband has gotten. By the way, you know how stupid you sound? White men divorce their black bed winches all the damn time. And she not going to get nothing because if her income is high enough, she can't get anything for that. And by the way, you don't have any real insight into their finances, so knock it off. You don't know what they have or what they don't. What you do know is he could drop her any day now and keep rolling. Now that we do know. What, what the hell do you think? You think his money is hers? Do you, you think that's the way the court system works? Some of these folks here are sitting right here next to me. He, he rich. You don't have any clue what his finances are. Trust me. No, I don't trust you. No, you're, you're no, no, no. You don't, you don't even know. Well, I think it is. You don't know anything. And by the, and furthermore, it doesn't matter. If he drops her tomorrow, she's going to splatter like an egg on the sidewalk. And he going to keep it pushing. She can have the what? She can have the house. She can have the kid. Then he's going to go find him a white woman so he can reintegrate himself back into white society. Call from area code 941. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is the deacon calling from Palmetto, Manatee County. And if Candace Owens want to come back to some soul pole, I got, dang it, I got it. The deacon uh, right here putting his uh, chance in because she's a beautiful Boy, woman. To what me. in the hell is the matter with you? Yo, oh, I'm going to tell you, she ain't got no BBL. She got a natural hair. She ain't got no white woman wig on. And you ain't going to see her at Walmart with a light blonde wig, a cagney and lacy wig. And no, you'll no, you'll just see her. Right no, on. you'll just see her on Fox News defending the police gunning us down. So no, you won't see her at Walmart with a fake wig. You'll see her on Fox News next to Sean Hannity congratulating the police for shooting us. Oh, but but I'm gonna tell you though, know, uh, one thing about her though, it's just like I, I think with with her look and just her style. See, she turned me on because see, I'm used to Glorilla type chicks over here in old ugly ass Florida. What? So, you know, yeah, so, well, yes, sir. So when Candy come in on that Fox News talking real good and intelligent and, and, and she looked like her feet smell good, the woman looking tight into the deacon. I hold her hand. Oh, I'll be a boy's rocking step daddy. Oh, yes, sir. And the deacon tell her she come on back home. Come on, get the soul pole from the deacon. I ain't got nothing but love for you, Miss Candy. Brother. Now, my money ain't worth a damn now. I got a full, a three-digit uh, income, every, you know, but God dog it, you know, that social security check still come. And yes, son, the deacon sell Viagra every, you know, every month. Now, God dang it. Brother, yes, sir, brother, I, 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 I gotta I ask you. Brother, Doc and De brother, yes, brother, sir. Pastor Deacon, Dr. Doug, I gotta ask you. Reverend Brother, Pastor Deacon, Dr. Doug. Talk to um, me. Brother, how old are you again? The deacon forty five, but really sixty two. I'm about to say, yes, brother, sir. you you sound like you sound like you about seventy years old. Now, I I hate yes, to sir. besmirch a woman's honor, even if that woman is Candace Owens. Go ahead, brother. What you gonna do yes. with a thirty four year old? Oh, oh, see, see, the deacon gonna virginize. See, she ain't have. She haven't had no good soul pole since '96 when two when Tupac died. So well, brother, I'm I'm scared. I'm like, scared you gonna have a cardiac arrest. What you gonna do with a 34 year old? Oh boy, it's a lot of things we gonna do. We ain't going to the library though. We going to that house that I live in. The efficiency. So boy, I'm gonna take old Miss Owens there. We gonna ride the big Cadillac. I got that dead president Cadillac. You know the one that when old you remember when uh. 
when old dog came home from the army and it, and the lady knew how to have good freaking sex. That's the kind of Cadillac I got a chance to be. But Cadillac. brother, so but brother, the, what about yes, but what about yes, the sir. Medicaid and the arthritis? Oh boy, look at here. The dick, the deacon got a little bit of Ben Gay medicine now. The only thing I get a Charlie horse in that left ass cheek, but I know how to take a little yes, sir. I got them lower tabs and putting them good purposes, you know, to, to to make my nature feel good. So yes, sir. But I'm bobbing and weaving. I'm Muhammad Ali when I goes in there. Oh yes, sir. And I want Miss Candace. I've been liking her. That woman attractive. I like a woman with a ugly ass family from good times. How do that? That just it just turned me on. And then she got a natural neck. If you look at the back of old Miss Owens' neck, remember when she had the White Lives Matter T-shirt on? Oh, when her and Kanye West. Oh, I like the way her backside looks. I want a woman with a with a with an eighth grade backside, you know, because some of these women with these big ass B B B L, some of them stink, and they too big, brother. A woman got a milk crate ass back there, and I'm tired of looking at this. How your head little? You got a little old lemon head, but your backside big and, and coordinated. So yes, sir, and then your feet little. These chicks shaped like Pepsi bottles, two liters. I want me a natural born woman. Yes, sir, brother, with small A cup breasts. I don't want her to look like no white boy in the chest. And she don't need to look like Michael Jackson, but she keep her natural color. And boy, the deacon going to have a good time. You hear me? Oh, man, we might even go to the reparations, goddamn, the parade or whatever. So, yes, sir, because it's time. And I know she easing back over here. So, Miss Candace, if you listening, the deacon throwing his shot out. Now, his check ain't worth a damn. The check got on life support. But, boy, he got other good things that you will love. So again, brother, y'all don't need her. I pick her, God dang it. And she clean too. Her feet look like they smell good. But mm, brother, yes, it. sir. A anything else too, brother Black, before all the deacon gone? Because you done got me excited. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. Lord. Boo -ba 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 -ba. Okay, yes, well, sir. thank you very much here, brother. Here it's just yell. Yeah, that nigga gotta take out a payday loan to take her on a date. He'd have to go down to the corner of Fifth and Elm so he can go ahead and panhandle some money to take her out, brother. It's uh, it's not gonna hit the way you want it to, brother. It's not gonna hit the way you want it to. It's just, what the hell are you gonna do with a thirty-four year old? It's just sit there and look at her and hope nothing too bad happens. It's he thinking it's gonna be an amusement park ride. It's gonna be more like a car wreck. It's like, oh, wait a minute, she got a firmer grip than I do. He gonna figure, like, oh, she got a firmer grip than I got. Whoa. Oh, this could go bad. Call him Erico 404. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Call him Erico 404. Last try. You're on live. Hello. Hi. I'm Michelle. How are you? Okay, Michelle, where are you calling from? Wisconsin. Okay, where are you calling from? I don't, agree, you know, I, I don't like. I'm not a fan of Candace either. Um, I don't like how she talk bad down about her people. But this is on another level where she died. Um, okay, ma'am, where in you? where in Wisconsin are you calling us from? America. Say again. You said West, I'm I'm from Wisconsin. Yes, ma'am. Where at in Wisconsin? That's the state, ma'am. I'm in Washington. Okay, she sounds very unsure about herself. All right, you got thirty seconds. What's on your mind, <laughs> such as it is? Okay. Um, I agree. Candace is she's she's a she's a piece of work. I don't like what she's done over the years talking about her people, but by the way, what she when she talked to the rabbi, which I don't want to call him that because that means master. Um it's on another level. It's not all about money. She basically exposed him and made him look very small. And she was bold enough to do that. I have not seen anyone else with the platform she has as a woman, do that, you know? So I have to give her kudos for that, you know? 
because those people are being exposed when they were underground in a tunnel and raping, I mean, had 30 women captives of, of another so-called rabbi. And it was in the news and out of the news. They're being exposed. And she's helping it, you know. And what she did was brilliant. The way she broke him down. She embarrassed him. You know? She made him look really small. So that's what this is really all about. I can't even say thank you for your call. All right, let me get caller from area code 415. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Don P. from San Francisco. Don from San Francisco. What's on your mind? Man, I didn't even want to call you tonight. I, I wanted to save my weekend calls because I was like, I'm done with Candace. I mean, I'm not even thinking about her. But when Deacon Otis got on your line, I was like, oh, hell to the nose. So I mod for other channels, and Deacon Otis has been on twice. One last week and then one week before. With this tomfoolery that he had. And I was just like, ooh, I wait to see how this is going to play out on Jason's channel. It played out exactly the way I expected it to. Yeah, torch the nigga. And so, you know, B1 ain't to be played with. This is not a square for fools. Keep your tomfoolery to yourself. And don't come up here with real ones. You understand what I'm saying? Jason Black, that's my brother. Because I believe we have the same ideology, belief, and I believe that we'll die for one another on that front line. But the tomfoolery, keep that shit in your comedy club. And, 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 and put some holy water on your ass. Or in so his case, be, uh, just, uh, uh, he can just put some regular water in. Not, not in I, I'll, I'll go for tap water at this point. I really will. <laughs> Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight, Don. Let me get called Miracle 615. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Uncle Jay. This is Tony from uh, Nashville. Tony from Nashville. What's on your mind? Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm glad the brother said what he said. Uh, the previous caller said what he said because I think this just gives us, uh, although that shit was funny what the old head was saying, it just gives an idea of what, uh, what black people got to go through as far as us getting sold up the river for for a piece of ass and everything, I, I'm really uh, it's it's really sad to hear that you know what I'm saying all these men are calling in, you know, knowing that this woman will stand on your grave and talk shit about you and say that you should have been complying when the police was trying to arrest you or shoot at you when you were unarmed, and uh, they still talking about yeah she looked good you know she sound good she speak good this and that. This woman was literally spit on your damn grave and not even think nothing about it. And it's crazy that these people calling up talking about, you know, I still hit it. It don't make no sense to me, Uncle Jay. Well, I mean, look, but that's also a good thing. It is good that they put their chips on the table. Look, I'm not that fella telling folks to hide what they think. I've never been that dude. I want everybody to fly their banners openly. I want all the coons, the suckers, the simps, the individuals who will sell us out for a peck on the cheek from a bed winch. I want all of them to throw their banners up, throw their flags up, and let it be known. That's what I want. Right. I want everything up top on the bricks because here's the thing. If, if, if we don't see it, a lot of folks don't believe it. And I want you all to understand that is what emboldens her because she's, she sits up there and tells the white folk, behind closed doors see they, that's how easy it is see they, they don't have any cohesion they don't have any principles that's how easy it is that's why i'm here with you zaddy because that's how easy it is to break those black men see so it's, it's very important that we understand that that's a real thing that's not our imagination it's not just a talker it's a, there is an element that does that and once you accept and understand there's an element that does that you'll stop overlooking it 
And so when we referenced her, I was talking about that before when fellas in the talking about, oh, she looked like this and looked like that. Not a word about her damn policies. Not a word right. about it. So these are fellas who ain't got nothing, ain't got nothing to bring, don't have anything to offer. And they they they, they would sit up here and sleep with the damn alley cat if it would slow down long enough and stop hissing at them. So we just need to understand that that's really what's going on. These guys are really out there representing. They really are saying those things. They're really on Facebook and Twitter sitting up here saying, I don't give a damn if she hate black men. If I can lay up and if that's the height of his aspirations, dude, you'll get killed doing that. Let's see what finds out. All I can say, welcome to your Darwin Award. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Let me get called from Air Code 703. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Mike from Alexandria, Virginia. Mike from Alexandria, what's on your mind? So I'm about to repeat the uh, sentiments of the last caller. I wasn't even planning to call up, but after that, just string of callers that basically like just sold their soul for like an average looking chick. Forget forget even looks in general. It, it doesn't matter if she looked like Lauren London. This look like woman has gone on record defending uh, Trayvon Martin getting killed defending George Floyd getting killed and you brought it up to them and and he completely bypassed it. Like it didn't mean anything. Well, yeah, well, I mean, she got some like, bro, what, are, what is going on right now? Like, like uh, on your other channel, we hear you uh, talk about how desperate some of these dudes are for sex, but you're right. It, it really puts into perspective. They'll really sell us like out for, for a, a little average chick, just any, anything. Well, the, the reason why I do this is because you cannot truly understand what it means to be on code until you are brutally assaulted by what it means to be off code. You can't truly understand it until you get here and you see they really will go this far. These kind of fellows really will do this kind of thing. They will literally sit here and break bread with your enemy and Here's the crazy part, brother. Here is the insane part of this. They have absolutely zero probability of what they fantasizing about ever happening. They are sitting here selling their souls and denigrating themselves for a picture <laughs> on Instagram or YouTube that they have zero chance of ever fulfilling the fantasy. So what I'm saying is these are the ultimate daydreaming dudes out here. They have no Pathetic. chance whatsoever of ever getting close to her in any way, shape, form, fashion, or manner. If you got hit by a car, she wouldn't call 411, much less my 911. So understand that that's just how serious it is. Let's put that. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight here. Let me get called from area code 832. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yo, you hung up on me, man. But let me say this, man. Dude, those calls are wrong, bro. Come on, man. Jason, 25% of the males on your audience, they will subscribe to our OnlyFans if they have the opportunity. Am I right? Hello? Ah! Nigga, please. Go to sleep. Call from area code 571. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Shakir. I'm calling from Arlington, Virginia. All right, Shakir from Arlington. What's on your mind? I wasn't going to call in tonight either. But this whole thing, do you realize accountability? We can't really call people to account like we should. You know, Black Lives Matter, those people, those women that stole that money, if they were in communist China, they would have been put to death. And when people sell us out, they, you know, we, we have no way of exacting that punishment. You know, I mean, just, just think about that. If they had done, and over in China, what they did with that money, they no question, they would have been put to death. That's how serious this is. I'm out. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. I mean, these fellas sitting up here caping for Candace Owens' sex appeal. Do you realize how dry your life has been if that's what you're reduced to? Do you realize that? And then talking about what the rest of us would do. Nigga, please. 
just because your standards are that low and you're that cheap and you're that easy to buy, that doesn't mean the rest of us are. Looking, Y'all niggas crazy. I be all over that. Oh, y'all nigga nutty. Hey, if you want to know why it is that every once in a while you see a black male get took off in the woods somewhere and he's dead under some mysterious circumstances, okay. Oh, come on with us, Leroy. All right. That's yeah, right. Red these niggas don't understand. Man, they don't get. It. Oh, by the way. Hey, do y'all remember the truck driver? The truck driver who was where? In South Texas? He told us he was going off with the two or three Latina women that night. Remember, I was trying to warn him. I'm like, hey, bro. You don't even know them like that. Trying to convince me that everything's okay and everything's sweet and ain't no racism and this, that, and the other. I'm like, hey, do you even know these women? Not really. We just met, but it's okay. Hey, bro. What in the world? So y'all notice we ain't heard back from him yet either. A little ominous, but by the way, hey, we ain't heard back from him yet neither. Okay. Before I go any further here, shout out here to Andrea Roberson. In the super chat, along with everybody else here, big shout out here to Alan Lloyd. We thank you very much for your support here tonight. Jean, Mark B, Walter, Sean, and everyone else. I'm going to take a couple more phone calls here. Let me get a call from area code 646. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Onan from Queens. What's going on, Jason? Onan from Queens. What's on your mind? So there was an interview that uh that candace did with mark lamont hill and during the interview um the situation with george floyd was brought up and she said that it would make more sense if the cops were to turn around and protest black men um because of all the apparent assaults that were taking place against police at the hands of black men and when she said that that just solidified her place in coon history as far as I'm concerned. And I'm not even ashamed to admit it. I'm one of the brothers who actually did think that she was kind of cute back in the day, you know, but I'm not out here just thinking with my little head. I'm out here thinking with my big head and I, I got to see things for what they are. You know what I mean? So that coon caller that called out, you know, with all this preaching and proselytizing and speaking in tongues about how what what he's gonna do with Candace Owens and all this other stuff. I I, I get it for what it is, but at the same time it's like what you said before, you gotta let people like that speak and let they you know, just let they flag fly so you know how to identify them and just get them out of the paint so we could get some real purpose done and I'll land there. So be one brother, brother Onan, you, 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 yes, sir. you used to think Candace Owens was, was, was. Hey, you really, know what? Brother? I'm not even going to hold you. I, I, I actually think she is kind of cute. I'm not, I'm not a brother, fan of her politics. Brother Onan, as as... <laughs> I, I, brother Onan. And you know, yeah. I'm, you know, what's coming next. It's, <laughs> Brother Onan, are, are are you still bisexual or was this conversion? Or what? Nah, nah, I still am. I still am. Nah, I'm not running away from nothing. Okay. I still am. I'm just staying in the opinion. You know what I'm saying? Okay, we well, she, look here. If, if I can hook you two up, nigga, I'm doing it tonight. If I can do that, I'll <laughs> throw a little few dollars at that one. I'll throw a few dollars at that one. Oh, trust me, nah, I, I'll nah, see if I can help that. finance that one for you. I'm gonna throw, I'll throw a few dollars on it. So it's just, all I can say is let that speak for itself. <laughs> let that speak for itself right there. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. I'm like, yeah, just, yeah, just let me let that one speak for itself right there. I thought she kind of hot. I thought she was kind of hot, Jason. All right. Let me kick this nigga out of my bed. Come here, Candace. I think she look all right. It's all right. 
Get the hell out of here, Elroy. Candace coming over. All right, let me get, um, call from Erico321. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello? Yes, you're on live. What is your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, my name is Bianca, Jacksonville, Florida. All right, Bianca from Jacksonville. What's on your mind? So first I want to say that, of course, um, I hated Candace Owens at first. I didn't like her. Um, I started watching her show. Um, and, of course, the Daily Wire is very far right. And to my surprise, she was starting to have a lot of liberal views. And, you know, she was being very outspoken about the Jews. She was um, against um, what's happening in, in Israel, very pro-Palestine. Um, and um, I knew I knew that uh, she, she was going to get fired because it seemed that she was sharing a lot of her liberal views, like she was getting a little bit too comfortable. Um, I don't know if you watched a lot of her her show lately. Still, she she keeps a lot of those those you know right views, and you know still supports Donald Trump and all that other stuff. But she was sharing a lot of liberal views towards the end. Well, I mean, and, in, in some know, areas, maybe I mean, I don't say liberal, maybe more moderate or whatever. But it's, I mean. Uh, don't don't read too much into that kind of thing there she's she's been trying she obviously understood the writing was on the wall when ben came for her so publicly when ben shapiro came oh, yeah. at her so publicly she that was her nigga wake up call right then he wasn't doing that oh yeah ben shapiro does not do that if 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 uh jeremy borish does not back him so when if ben is coming at you he's got jeremy borish's uh blessing to do it. Right. And she knew that right then. There's no way Ben's coming at me like this. I'm part of Daily Wire. There's no way he's coming at another colleague on Daily Wire unless he got the backing from the boss. There's no way he's doing this. So she knew right every every black person know when they get ready to get fired. Every black person knows when the, the management's just <laughs> let something really wacky go ahead and happen there. So every black person <laughs> understands when that's the case. And when Ben started shooting at her so publicly, she knew, and uh, Jeremy didn't do anything about it. She knew right then. She knew right then, okay, my days are numbered. Next thing you know, she starts yeah. going on other people's programs and trying to expand her audience reach and so on and so forth. So that's, th that's where that came from. She knew it was happening. She knew it was coming then. She is completely unsurprised that this happened. She hung in there as long as she could, but it, it was coming no matter what. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Let me get a call from Eric Code 678. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Jason. Good night. My name is Orion. I'm calling from Lithonia, Georgia. Hi, right, Orion and Lithonia. What's on your mind? Well, this is the way I look at it as far as her being a pretty woman. Under a microscope, rattlesnake venom is very pretty as far as the colors. Does that mean that you would want it in your bloodstream? I think not. I ended there. Very good point. Some of these Negroes believe in tongue kissing rattlesnakes. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Let me get caller from area code 251. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Jason. It's Kevin calling back from Mobile. I just want to say this real quick. Now, y'all got to be foul. Just because you a smash a trick. That don't mean you're going to put on a line. Candace, she kind of ugly, but she kind of sexy at the same time. And I'm going to tell you what made me respect her when she stood up to that, that them, them Jews. Because a lot of people scared of them, but she stood up square. So, like I say, just because you are, you are a smasher, that don't mean that. that, that Brother, I'm okay, that. let's that try let's a, try this a different way. Shouldn't a man have standards? Yes. Okay, shouldn't one of those standards be that we don't sleep with white supremacists or aspiring white supremacists? Shouldn't that be a standard too? I mean, if you're going to use it for a calm dumpster, though. I mean, I use okay, it for a Okay, well, dumpster, well sir, sir, if your sexuality and genetic material is that cheap and that low in value, 
then we ain't got nothing else to talk about. I, I, I don't understand your worldview, and I nor do I desire to do so. Thank you All very right. much for giving us a call. No, brother, I, I can't shove my head up my ass far enough to be able to see the world the way you do. I'm trying to see the world the way you do, but I can't shove my head up my ass enough to be able to see it the way you do. So I, if I could shove my head up my ass far enough, maybe I could see life from your perspective, but I, I just can't, I, I can't get it there. It's, so it's just not going to work. I mean, I would, I would, I, mean, I, I, I would, do she's sitting over there dancing the Macarena while the police shot you. Sitting there laughing. I mean, well, that, that don't mean nothing. Well, that's what that's supposed to mean. I mean, you know what I mean? I had some exes. They treated me bad, too. My mama used to bust me upside the head. My auntie used to kick me down. My grandmama used to sit up here and slip, uh, throw banana peels on the floor without following it. My granddad used to give me shoes because they were four sizes too big. Told me that's all they got. I, I've been treated way worse than Miss Candace would treat me. I've been treated way worse than that. I'm thick skinned, Jason. I'm thick skinned. All right. Mobile, hold this L. Houston, hold this L. Oh, the South is suffering tonight. And then they want to talk about what the rest of us would do. Nigga, please. They want, they want to sit up here and project a division. You know, the red y'all would. No, nigga, no. No. Ain't going to get leaned out. There's a whole bunch of things you do that the rest of the world's not doing. Really? You wouldn't do that? No. No. Shramstein B1 there. Just became a member of the channel. Ain't seen your name in a while, brother. I ain't seen your name in a while there. Let me get a uh, caller from area code 929. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? 60 seconds. Rashad from the Bronx. Okay, what's the name again? Rashad from the Bronx. All right, Rashad from the Bronx. What's on your mind? So basically, I feel like when she comes, we already know what they do. They're going to come back to black media eventually once they get done with them over there. I just can't stand the fact that she doesn't really get challenged on the horrible, crazy things she said against our community. She comes to our community and speaks to our media, and she doesn't really get challenged. That is what it is, but that part is just insulting for us as a people and embarrassing because we don't even hold ourselves accountable for crazy things. They say you just go sit with Charlemagne, and it's like all this fluff they discuss. That's in, in itself. I just bear with Ten me quick. seconds. I a political point. I feel like I don't understand. She has to make this pivot. You got to go big or go home. This is the Trump era. It's 2024. Everything is up. It's up. It's up. Why is she going soft with the black pivot? Just politically, I'm discussing. If she was going to make this move, why not go hard? Why not go reparations? We have all the... The, because the, she literally uh, sat up in front of the United States government it. and said that she was against reparations. Furthermore, she doesn't qualify for it. So, yes, but she wants that's her whole image. Like, I'm making this stand because it's right, not because I'm going to benefit. It would be an even stronger stand. And even if it's a farce, it would be positive for her towards her goal to come back. I'm just talking politically. And if she wanted to deal with Trump, who's looking to probably win and even bring more black people over to a conservative side, I'm just saying politically, then it would be something that you discuss seriously and say all the facts that we know we have the greatest case for uh, 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 government repair than there ever was. It's the time for it. There's, a, there's no one discussing it. It would be her own lane, and it would be a big swing, and it would give her more balls than any of these black commentators out here because guess what? She would have facts behind her. It would be a grift. She's still a horrible person, but I'm just saying politically, I think that would be something better she would do. And I do appreciate you having this forum, even though some people get ridiculous and not serious about it. I do appreciate you giving everybody a voice. Y'all be well. Always think black people. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Um, yeah, 
Kansas is trying to pivot, but really just to expand her audience. So she's not really going to change any of her core policy positions because it's not going to work. It's not going to work. So there, there's the real issue there. There's the real issue there. She's, you know, she, she needs to have a safe haven, but she burned all of her bridges among the people that she came from. There's the problem. She needs a safe haven. She needs a place safe to hide out at. And the folks that she gathered around her I ain't really committed to giving her one. So this is it. It's do or die. It's do or die. I'm not predicting that she's going to go away, but I definitely see her. I definitely see her strength is going to be compromised. I definitely see that his strength, her, her strength is going to be compromised. I don't see her working the same way. I don't see her working the same way. If nothing else, she has officially gotten her Negro wake up call. I mean, it was brutal. It was loud. It was public and they going to keep going at her. Just understand, they're going to keep going at her. It's real easy to talk about this week. What she's not thinking about is next year. When they are still, when the press and the media and the corporations are still describing her that way. That's going to be the issue. Nice to fantasize that you can shake that off. Eh, don't think it's going to be as easy as that. We're going to go ahead and wrap things up here tonight. If you are new here to the Black Channel, welcome to the Haven of Intelligent Black Thought. We do this every weekend. Click that red subscribe button. Click that yellow notification bell. Join us each and every time that we're here. If you haven't been to our website, blackchannelfilms.com, you want to go and check out our groundbreaking, best-selling documentary work, 7 a.m. Gentrified Race War, all available on DVD and streaming. Go to blackchannelfilms.com. That is blackchannelfilms.com. Our crowdfunding for my new documentary film, 8 a.m., is still ongoing here. You can be a part of history. The link is in the description. Go ahead and hit that now. We definitely want to see you be a part of that as well. Speaking of which, I want to thank all of you for being a part of tonight's program. Thank you for joining us live or recorded. Thank you for liking, subscribing, and sharing. Thank you to every single person who has contributed to support tonight's program. As always, you are appreciated. And this concludes tonight's broadcast of the Black Channel. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, the Black Authority. And until next time, my brothers and my sisters from around the world, remember, Black is the future and the future is uncomfortable.